Alessio Sokolov wanted revenge and would have done anything to bring down his enemies. Before, he wanted to kill every single Italian as the Russian Bratva. It was his only purpose since they killed his mother. That was before Ava Genovese. She was nothing more than a stepping stone as the Italian's princess, only a pawn in his twisted game. Now he knows there's no life without his other half. And he'll do anything to get her back. Ava Genovese wanted freedom and found it through her other half, Alessio. She was finally happy and found a family to call her own. Just as quickly, it was ripped away from her. Her wings are stripped away until she yearned for nothing more than death. Will Alessio be able to save and bring back the girl he fell in love with? Or were their story doomed from the start? Stay in the loop and never miss a beat. Subscribe to my channel to get exclusive access to a plethora of exciting new audiobooks. From gripping thrillers to heartwarming romances and everything in between, I've got you covered. Don't let these captivating stories pass you by. 1. Alessio In chess, the probability of losing a game after losing the queen usually meant to resign, because the chances of winning are slim to none if it's taken with no tactics. Right now, I felt like I was ready to forfeit my own life, to go back in time to protect her. The thought of her without me right now made my heart ache. And the ache in my heart didn't reside any time soon. In fact, I was standing in the driveway for half an hour now. My feet stayed planted as the rain came down, my eyes peeled onto where Ava usually was. The greenhouse that once belonged to my mother. It was now brimming with life, a few books resting where she had last left off because she enjoyed being outside more than being indoors. But even though it looked bright and new, it meant nothing without Ava there. The thought of my other half not being there made me question how I lived without her before. Everything seemed to be in black and white without her. I failed her. I failed to protect my other half, my wife, my queen. The clouds above, gray and heavy, rumbled and I tensed. Ava was terrified of thunder, and now, I wasn't there to comfort her anymore. It's been two days and we had no leads of where she was. It felt like a cruel joke for the way I treated her. I balled my fists up, biting my tongue, till the metallic flavor filled my mouth. It was only able to subside the pain in my chest at a bare minimum. No, I knew what was going to make me feel alive. Splattering the blood of my enemies till I have what was mine back. I'll kill them all. Walking in with a new goal in hopes it'll distract me from the pain of Ava not being there to greet me anymore, I stormed down into the cellar of our estate. On the way, I noticed my men. Silas, my right-hand man, greeted me with a nod along with Nikolai, one of my most trusted hitmen. Both stepped aside at the sight of me, their boss, their pecan. What are we dealing with? Still the same bullshit, Silas informed me. His attire was covered in spatters of blood. His hair was slick to one side, and he looked just as tired as I felt. Although Ava's blood was Italian, our sworn enemy, she had managed to become a sole exception. And their loyalty to me meant extending it to my queen, their queen. I don't believe it, Nikolai growled. Five men and none of them knew how Robert was able to get into the penthouse and take Ava. Then all the cameras went out. Four died of blood lost but that's okay, he said with a twisted smile. There was a reason why he was deemed unstable among our families, but I trusted him. He was able to provide the results I needed. Because after two days, we finally were able to narrow it down to Maxim. He has to know something and his bank being wired half a million from an offshore account is all the proof we needed. At that, Silas handed me a loaded gun. We thought it's best if you finish it, boss. Seeing how he's the one who allowed your woman to be taken, only seemed fair. Let's see what this fucker has to say, I snickered, entering the dark cellar. The poor bastard was tied to the chair for close to two days now. Though from the looks of it, he wouldn't last another day before being succumbed to his injuries. He was bloodied and battered. Covered in bruises and cuts of all shapes and sizes. A screwdriver was dug into his thighs, with blood oozing out of it. He was barely able to list his head to look at me, as Silas and Nikolai closed the door behind us. Maxim was it. 
I began, a sworn-in member by a blood oath to the loyalty of the Russian family. Tell me, do you know what happens to those who are sworn in and break their oath? I'm telling you, I don't. Yes you do. I'm asking you one more fucking time. Where the hell is my wife? Mr. Sokolov, I've told you dozens of times. The video feed was cut, and... I bashed the barrel of the gun onto the side of his head before I could stop myself. The rage overtook me, and for the first time in a while, I didn't care. My knuckles cracked and throbbed when I first made contact with his face. The pain only helped dull the ache in my heart temporarily, as I watched the bastard on the floor, writhing and moaning in pain. And I didn't stop. I kept going, letting my anger have its fun on the surface. I didn't even stop till I felt his breathing become shallow, and I knew he was barely conscious at this point. I got up to assess him. His eyes were swollen shut. His lips were cracked, some teeth on the floor and blood were coming out of his mouth profusely. The cuts scattered around his face and body were oozing blood. I fixed the sleeves of my shirt and stared down at him. Where's my wife? Robert, he wheezed out, his voice cracked and barely able to make out words. Took her. I'm sorry, but I needed the money for. So, you betrayed your blood family, for the enemy's money? She was an Italian, I never swore my loyalty to her, he spat out weakly. I immediately brought my shoes at full force into his hands, and the sound of his bones cracking echoed around the darkroom. He tried to escape, dragging his body away, but I stopped him with my other foot onto his chest. He had nowhere to go, and was completely at my mercy. All he could do was wail in pain as I continued my torture. I stepped to the other side where his hands were and took his index finger, bending it back till the sickening sound of his bone cracking was heard. It was a beautiful sight, though I preferred splattered blood. Let me say this once, I gritted out. She's my wife, which means you are nothing more than her loyal dog. I know you won't be the first and only to question her, question your loyalty to her. And I don't care that you are my family or my trusted men. I will kill all who fucking disrespect my queen. It was my fucking vow. You understand? I seethed. He nodded. P please just, just put me out of my misery. I T-S-K-E-D. Not yet. Not till I'm satisfied with your answers. Snapping my fingers, Silas brought forward the bucket of boiling hot water. In a pair of heat-resistant gloves, he grabbed the fucker's hair and dunked him into the water. He thrashed to the best of his abilities against it, but it was no use. A few seconds later, Silas released him and let him breathe through his bashed nose. His whole face was swollen red, his eyes now glued shut. He gasped for air, a small amount of foam coming through his mouth. And no more. Should have thought of that before you betrayed me, I shouted and withdrew my gun, aiming it at his thighs. He howled in pure agony and started begging more. I shot again and then another. His scream was piercing through my ears but I didn't wince. No, I was feeding off his pain but it wasn't enough. I had slipped up by allowing him to watch over her. And now she was gone. One last time, where is Robert? He shook his head weakly and I growled. Wrong fucking answer. I reached into my back pocket for my small twisting knife. Maxim's eyes widened when he realized what was coming next. If he thought I was going to end his life just like that, he had another thing coming. When I nodded at Silas and Nikolai, both of them took out their own knives and went straight to work. I watched them slice through his wrists, his bones showing as blood dripped wildly onto the floor. I slowly walked towards him, letting him soak up the pain before I plunged the knife straight into his heart and twisted. His mouth opened wide and his whole face fell back. His whole body tensed before he slumped. Just like that, we had yet another lifeless body at our disposal with no answers. I kicked his body till he was lying on his stomach and started to carve onto his back. When I was finished, Nikolai laughed. That's fucked up, Nikolai marveled at my work with a grin of Ava's name. I like it. And I'll do it to every single person that has hurt or wronged Ava one way or another, I announced. Shrugging off my suit that was already covered in my own sweat and the blood of my enemy, I threw it onto the floor. Get someone to clean up this mess. Got it, 
Silas nodded and then cocked his head to the side. What about Antonio in the other room? Still alive after Dr. Benzo stitched up all his wounds and made sure it wouldn't get infected, I commanded. There was no way I was allowing Ava's father to die so easily. No, he would be suffering an unimaginable and painful death for my mother and Ava's sake. We're going to transfer him to Ophelia's because I don't want to take a risk of anyone infiltrating and rescuing his ass. Silas nodded. It'll be done at the end of the day. He's still not talking. Nikolai asked with a deep frown. No, I replied. But it doesn't matter. He'll break sooner or later. In the meantime, I'm going to take a shower and check on Anna. Both of them nodded as I went back upstairs. Since coming back to the estate, I realized just how quiet and cold it was without Ava. I couldn't even imagine what life was like before she came into my life. Into everyone's life. Passing through the library upstairs, the dull ache in my chest returned. The library was like another home for her besides the greenhouse. It was a place she would escape to, the only place where it seemed she enjoyed her time there. It was like another comfortable place for her outside of the little cage she had. And I let her get taken. I couldn't even sleep in my own bedroom without her. I've taken it to sleep in my office because everywhere else reminded me too much of her. The chessboard I had was put away. Anything that reminded me of Ava was too painful. Taking a quick shower from the smell and changing into a pair of sweatpants and gray shirt, I passed through the other side of the estate where everyone else who lived here slept. I barely went over to that side besides lately to check on Anastasia. I was greeted by Alexei who had pulled a small sofa in front of Anastasia's room. In front of her door was this morning's breakfast on a tray, untouched. When he saw me, he offered me a small smile. There were bags under his eyes from staying up and making sure his sister wasn't going to try anything too irrational. I shoved my hands into my pocket. How's Anna? He sighed. Still upset, crying and refusing to acknowledge anyone since she came home two days ago. Not even me. I'm a bit worried about her since she won't eat either. Maybe I should have a word with her, I offered but grimaced. At that, Alexei pressed his lips into a thin line in disapproval. I don't think you should. I know. After all, I was the one who had promised Anastasia that I would never let anything happen to Ava in the first place. I was the one that swore to protect her but now it was up in flames. I didn't need pity in the eyes of my men. The only one who would look at me with hatred, to remind me of how much I fucked up, was Anastasia. But I had to. I gently knocked on her door. Anna, let me in. It's Alessio. Go away, she said on the other side, her voice was croaked and weak. Let me in, Anna. We're all worried about you. If you don't let me in, I'll force myself in to check on you, I threatened. She knew I would because we all grew up together. When I didn't get my way, I would make a way. There was a shuffle, and then she timidly opened the door. Her eyes were bloodshot red along with her cheeks and nose. Her hair was a mess and heavy bags were under her eyes. I knew she was close with Ava, probably the first person she considered a friend. When I stepped all the way in, she shut the door loudly behind her. I turned to see her tears streaking down her face as her fist came in contact with my chest. Anna, you need to eat, you can't. You fucking promised, Anastasia sobbed cutting me off. Tears welled in the corner of her eyes as she shook her head and fell onto her knees in front of me. The ache in my heart, only amplified by how broken she sounded. You promised to keep her safe. You swore to me. You never broke a promise before with me. Anna? I choked out as she continued. She was in the same apartment as me, she wailed and shut her eyes tightly. I kneeled down, letting her sob into my chest as I soothed her back. I knew she blamed herself just as I did. She was in the same condo, just a few feet away when Maxim sold Ava out to Robert. She had a stomach bug and was out most of the day. When I came back, it was too late. Ava was done, and Anastasia never even knew. She grabbed onto my shirt shaking me back and forth. 
and if it wasn't for me being sick, maybe I could have saved her. Maybe I could have done something, anything. You can't blame yourself. There's no point. We'll find her, I replied shaking my head. What if she's dead, she blabbered on, her eyes swelling with more tears. She's not. Because I refuse to believe it. I refuse to live in a world where Ava wasn't here anymore. Losing my mother was hard, but losing who I thought was my other half destroyed me. We can't be sure, she continued to feed into her own despair. There's no clue, no leads. Nothing, she swallowed, her eyes erratic that it caused me to suffocate at the sight of her. She was the little sister I've always wanted, and to see her so overwhelmed was killing me. She blamed herself, blamed me in order to distribute some of her hardship. I would take it all, if I can. I was right there too. How could you have said those things to her before she was taken? At the low blow I knew she didn't mean, the dull ache in my chest worsened. So much so I felt as if I was suffocating from her question. I left Ava all alone thinking she'll be okay. Now she was captured and with no leads of where she was. Two days had passed and we were getting nowhere. No matter how many Italians we captured, tortured and slaughtered, there were no leads beside the obvious that Robert had her. The thought that Ava was in his hands sent me into another blind rage while my trusted men watched me lose it. The last thing I said to my wife was telling her she was nothing more than a stupid bird. The reason why my mother was dead. A liar. Our last interaction was full of hatred. I was blinded by the betrayal, not knowing it was the last time we would talk. I was too blinded by my own anger and betrayal. But I don't mean it. I love her more than I can breathe. She sucked in a sharp breath at my confession. The tears stopped as she stared at me in shock. You love her? I nodded. She's my other half, the reason I'm doing everything I can to bring her back. Anna, we'll find her. I promise. I swear on my fucking life that I'll find her, I pledged. I'll take a blood swear on it if she wanted it. I wouldn't stop until I had her in my arms, and I'm never letting her go after. She swallowed, her shoulders sagging. What if you break that? Gently, I thumbed away her tears. Her eyes were trained on me as if she was trying to find strength through my swear. She needed confirmation that she could trust me again. And I would do everything in my power to grant her that. Then I'll let you send me straight to hell where I belong for letting her go in the first place. Because I don't think I can live. Not when my other half, my Gien bird, wasn't on this earth anymore. 2. Alessio. Two weeks later. Boss, I really think. Silas, if this isn't about where our next fucking lead is, I don't need your damn advice, I snapped, raking my hair back. There was a throbbing in the back of my head, but it wouldn't stop me. The maddening feeling of needing to do something had me on edge. Running on just two or three hours of sleep in the past two weeks was like a punishment for what I've put Ava through. It was my retribution. Dude, you need to shower and get your head straight, Silas countered with a frown. And maybe sleep. When was the last time you slept eight years? I made a promise to Anna, I gritted out, resuming my focus back onto my laptop. Piles of paper were laid out everywhere, with the rest of the room trashed from my frustration. I didn't even leave the office, aside from the occasions where I thought we had a lead to finding Ava. Everything was delivered to me even meals that I barely touched. I made a promise to find her. I had to find Ava, no matter what. Robert was like a weasel. He was weak and so he did what he did best, hide. We had kidnapped, tortured and killed more than I could count at this point. Every single one was Gadji's men, and it seemed like Robert knew. He had purposely sent his men to mock me, letting his men carry a disposable phone where he'll call me. Ava's screams, whimpering, crying were what kept me up when I closed my eyes at night. Yet, I would never hang up. I needed to make sure she's alive. That she's here. Yeah, you promised me, but I didn't mean work yourself to death was what I had in mind, Anastasia butted in, snapping me out of my thought. Hands were on her hips as she frowned at me, along with her brother and Nikolai now. Even Rose is worried about you. 
She called me to check up on you, because you know she doesn't do emotions. I rolled my eyes. I'm fine. Why don't you take your energy in doing something else? Like helping me find where my wife is. Look, I get you're concerned, we all are, Alexei began. But this road isn't going to do anything but destroy you before you can find her. You need to rest for a bit. Another day that she's not here is another day where I can't rest, I shot back, anger rising in me again. I had never felt rage and frustration as I did right now with my most trusted people. I couldn't think straight, and I felt my mind spiraling. Not until I know she's safe, then I'll fucking rest. If you're going to just waste my time, get the fuck out. Everyone glanced at one another, and then made their way out slowly. I was still their boss, as with the other families, but right now, everything seemed minuscule compared to getting Ava back. The dizziness hits me along with the intense throbbing in my head, and I sat back down. Out of habit, I grabbed for the battered copy of Little Women mindlessly, though everything she scribbled and drawn was already embedded into my memories at this point. It was the only connection I had left of Ava, her favorite book. She had filled the pages with sketches. The first page was of what I presumed to be her mother she had done when she was younger. From there her skills and talents had progressed more and more. It was through the halfway marked that I realized she started to draw again when she came to live at my estate. Pages were filled to the brim with sketches of flowers, birds, and things that caught her interest. Yet most consisted of me. My little Ava had secretly been sketching me out in her book. She paid attention to every single detail, from my hair to my jawline. It was as if she was trying to capture a moment in time where she was happy. The last one was before I left to go after Robert after I've ravaged her all night. I was resting on my side and I looked peaceful. The blanket was draped on my stomach, my ring glimmering. It was something she paid special attention to sketching out, like it was her happiness. And I took that from her. Hours passed before a knock on my door caught my attention again. Come in. Silas stuck his head in. He cleared his throat, rubbing the back of his neck. His forehead was puckered upwards, and I knew what was coming next. Hey, so we had a group meeting, and we collectively agreed that you should. I don't care, I cut him off while focusing back on the book in front of me. It was the same bullshit. I was still running everything perfectly fine as their boss, so what I did with my free time afterwards shouldn't matter. Well I think you should, another voice said behind him. I blinked a few times in surprise before I got up. Father, I was expecting you to come tomorrow, I began. I had scheduled for him to come tomorrow for a meeting. Zavid Sokolov was a man with few words, fewer since the passing of his wife, my mother. His cold and empty eyes stared at me, and then his eyebrows knitted into a frown when he took in my appearance. He signaled for Silas to close the door for privacy and take a seat across from my desk. I heard what happened. Are you here to say good riddance because she's an Italian? I snickered. He shook his head. Why would I do that to my own son who looked clearly distressed? I sagged into my chair, drawing in a sharp breath. There was no point in trying to hide anything from my father. He was able to see through any bullshit without even trying, including mine. It was a reason why he was one of the best pecan before he resigned, due to him losing all motivation after mother's death. He became known as weak shortly after, as I took over the mafia at a young age, in order to get revenge on every single Italian. And now, I felt as if I was on the same boat as my father without his other half. How did you survive when mother died? I didn't, he stated with a lackluster smile. I'm just getting through the motion of life. I'm sure everyone knew the reason why I stepped down. I'm a hollow shell of who I am without her. Without my other half, my Jian. He took a pause and then takes out a cigar from his pocket. He took a puff and then cocked up one eyebrow. You're in love with her. There was no doubt in his voice and I could do nothing but nod my head firmly. He made the sign of the cross and murmured in Russian, Irina, you tvoyego sina sela dusha. On Nashal Svoyu. Irina, your son's soul is whole finally. He found his one. 
I didn't find her though, I murmured, forcing a chuckle out of me. I fucking said nasty shit to her before she was taken. And now she could be dead. He frowned deeply, his forehead crinkling. When did you become so negative like me, Igor? I knew he meant serious if he used my first name. Since mother passed, we stopped using my first name. It was too painful, and not to mention everyone had assumed I had died in that fire. I felt like a part of me did that day. You're kidding me, right? You're probably going to think this is bullshit, he drawled out. But when your mother died, I felt it in my soul before I found out about the fire. About the things she had to endure because she died. It was something I would never be able to put into words. It was almost as if my soul was snatched out of me, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. You're starting to sound like mother with these stories, I countered. At that he smiled fondly. She always did believe in these supernatural weird things, he pointed out, his eyes becoming glassy as if he was somewhere else. It was the only time his eyes weren't empty and cold. Only when he thought of her, that I was able to see how much he loves his wife. It was something I loved about her. Always so kind, so untainted even though she was thrust into this world. And to the very end, I wished I was strong enough to leave her alone, to not drag her into my world. I guess to some degree it's the same with your wife. I curtly nodded. She was something I never thought I wanted or needed. Always broke my expectation. She's pure, innocent, and too good for this world. Compared to us they're angels and we're the monster that stole them away. A knock on the door made us both quiet momentarily as I took in what he had said. He gets up from the sofa and Anastasia handed him two glasses of water. He thanked her before coming back and rested it next to me. Have a drink to refreshen yourself. Begrudgingly, I did as I was told out of respect. The water slides down my throat, the first liquid in a while that wasn't alcohol. Downing the whole thing I didn't realize how thirsty I was, I placed the glass back down, deciding I wasn't going to lie to my father anymore. Ava and I met before. When we were children. His face gave nothing away about my confession. Oh. I don't know if mother told you because we swore in secrecy. But there was a little girl that had run away from her home. Stumbled into our cottage hideout without even realizing it. At first we were on high alert until we both realized she meant no harm. Not even that she was always covered in bruises and cuts that I think mother took pity on her, I told him. My eyes closed as the memories swarmed me. She befriended me and mother quickly. She was so innocent, sweet, but with clouded eyes that told me she was fighting her own demons. It was a friendship that spanned for almost a month. I know. That didn't surprise me too much. Did mother tell you? Irina told me our boy has developed a crush on someone. She never said much about it, he chuckled. Though I didn't think much of it during that time. I assumed it was Anastasia since she's the only girl in the family you were somewhat close with. I didn't know it was with someone sneaking into the cottage I bought for you both. Right, I noted. So? What happened after? Though I was wary of her, I couldn't help but enjoy the time we spent together. She was much like mother. She liked to draw, paint, read, play chess. She was brilliant for a seven-year-old. We didn't know she was a Genovese. She would lie about her name and we both knew she was lying, but we never pressed for it either. I felt the muscles on my face tightened, knowing what was coming next after our one-month friendship. I didn't know it was her. That she was the reason why the Italians were able to find us. He goes quiet at the unsaid words that Ava was the prime reason for mother's death. Instead, he takes another puff of his cigar. Sometimes fate works in peculiar ways, he reasoned, and then I opened my eyes to see him staring back at me. So, what will you do now? I swallowed. I can't kill her. I never asked you to, he replied simply. I'll never let you lay a hand on her either, I said, clenching my fist of the thought of anyone touching what was mine. I'll fucking kill you if you touch my wife. His eyes widened slightly at my threat. I've never threatened my own blood family. 
Yet I had to draw the line with my loyalty was with her above anyone else. I thought he would lash out on me for choosing an Italian, but instead, he gave me a grin. I'm not going to lay a hand on her either. Now, I didn't know what my father was trying to play at. But she. If you're saying she's the one who led the Italians to you both that led to your mother's death, I'm going to smack you upside on behalf of her, he snapped. She was a child that didn't know any better. As with you were. Her death I cannot blame you or anyone else but myself. I felt a lump in my throat, choking me. Why's that? I was the one who didn't set up any precaution. No security team, no cameras because she didn't want to be watched, he argued. I wanted to correct him, but he cut me off. But there's no point in dwelling. I get your point of revenge, but it wouldn't bring her back. It wouldn't bring back my wife. I've long let go of revenge for her sake. Are you not angry? I am, but what good would that do? Irina wouldn't have wanted that, you know how your mother is, he scoffed, rolling his eyes. His eyes softened, and then he reached into his wallet. He produced a tattered picture of the three of us. I was about five smiling without a care in the world. My father was staring at mother, his eyes glimmering and happy. Do you know why we named you Igor? he asked, bringing my attention to him. Because we wished for you to be different. To rule with proper morals and be well respected. Not cruel like your grandfather. Not weak like me. Kind, well respected among everyone. Mother always called me a peaceful warrior when I thought I was better off as an unlovable cruel monster, I recalled. The recollection of her scolding me, when I wanted to be like my grandfather rang in my head. Yet she proved me wrong. Her love was extraordinary. He placed down his cigar and then straightened his back. Tell me does love make you weak? I stilled at his question. What did you say? Does love make you weak? He asked again and smiled. It was a question you had asked me before when you were a child. It always stumped me about your answer. Now I am asking you again. Does love make you weak? No it doesn't. It makes you stronger. It did contradict with everything I've said in the past, and even at the party when I first introduced Ava as my wife. I despised the thought of letting anyone in because it was a sign of weakness. I had said it time and time again how she's now my only vulnerability, dot yet I couldn't think of a world without her in it. Why he questioned, the room grows quiet. The window that was opened, letting the breeze dance inside even stilled, almost as if it needed to hear me admit it. Because you want to protect those you care about. It drives you to become better, stronger for their sake. It makes you the strongest person just being surrounded by them, I said. It made me want to fight harder so I could get Ava back in my arms. Which only brought the next question I've been wavering to ask my father. Can you take my place back as the pecan until I find my wife? When mother died, father wasn't in the mindset to rule or take care of the families anymore. It's been over 15 years now, but I knew I could still trust him to keep things running while I was gone. I trusted he would step down from the position when I get Ava back safely. And I couldn't balance both, and it didn't seem fair either. He nodded without a thought. Of course, I figured that was what tomorrow's meeting was about anyways. Great because I already got a list of placed and I can't waste a min, I stopped when I got up, the room slowly starting to spin. I rubbed at my eyes as I stared at my father. He didn't even look shocked as he stared back at me. In fact he looked as if he was expecting this. I narrowed my eyes, tensed when he took another sip of his glass of water. What the fuck did you do? He flashed me a small, apologetic-like smile. I'm sorry son but you need to rest. I knew once I said I'll fill in your role as the boss in the meantime, you're going straight into planning when you should be resting first. I would say the sleeping pills are doing a fine job. I couldn't believe my damn ears. You fucking drugged me. Trust but verify, Igor. Have faith in someone, but confirm their trustworthiness in any given situation, including this one he said with a grin. The world was starting to look fuzzy, my eyes hazy. And yes, I may have added some Ambien to your drink. Rest now son. 
And just like that, I was out. 3. Ava I stared up at the bright blue sky, two birds chirping and flapping happily with one another. I was at peace, watching them circle one another. It was like they were made for each other. For the first time in a while, I felt true peace. I felt someone's hand snaked around me, and I didn't have to turn to know who it was. It was as if my heart and body knew like he was the other half of me. His stomach drew small circles around my tummy, and a small giggle escaped my lips before I turned to look at him. My everything. My husband. My savior. My other half, my Gien bird. Alessio was grinning down at me with a crooked smile as I gently grazed the scar on his eyebrows. Almost as if he knew what I was thinking, he thumbed at the scar on my shoulder. It reminded me of a happier time, back when there were no barriers between us via anything else. I've been looking everywhere for you, he murmured against my temples. You scared me. I choked back a sob at his words. I couldn't believe my ears that he was here for me. I didn't know how long I had been trapped in the cellar, but it didn't matter. I was home. Alessio was here to take away everything. I pressed his palm into my cheeks, my eyes boring into his. Please don't leave me, I cried shaking my head. The words tumbled out of my mouth in a frenzy. I'm sorry for everything I've done. For lying to you. I was going to tell you, I. I know, he said, cutting me off. His eyes reflected into his soul that he didn't harbor any sort of hate for what I've done. No, it was full of love and compassion. I'm sorry too. I didn't mean to push you away like that. I was just angry. I was going to come back after everything. I love you, Ava. I love you so much. You are my other half. I started to sob harder at his confession. I had longed to hear those words so badly that our feeling for each other could conquer all hardship. It almost felt too good to be true. But I didn't care. All I cared about was his lips on mine, claiming me. I feverishly clung to him, deepening our kiss. His kiss took away every single one of my worries. I wasn't sure if my mind was playing tricks on me, but I didn't care. The warm feeling of his skin against mine was so addicting. We broke away, panting as we clung to each other. You are my everything. I love you, I whispered, clinging onto his jacket. I was scared of letting go, like he would change his mind. His eyes found mine, and I wished I could swim in them. I love you, Ava, he replied with a genuine smile on his face. I'm never going to let you go. Do you promise? He smiled down at me, cocking his head to the side. Have I ever went down on any of my promises? You're mine, whether you like it or not. Do you have a problem? Demanding as usual, and yet it gave me nothing but comfort as I smiled. No, I don't. He thumbed away the tears. I'm going to take away all of your pain. I choked back a sob again from his vow, tears still running down my face. It's not possible, I disputed, lowering my eyes so he can't see the shame. I was damaged goods already, before I came to him. Now it was so much worse. Robert, Robert? I don't care. I'll make sure you will never feel like this again. I'll erase it all, until you can only think about me. Until you understand your worth, how strong you are, he promises, kissing my tears away. Until you know you're free from all restraints of life. Until there's nothing but me left in your mind. Would you want that? Yes, I breathed, overwhelmed by his promises. Yes, Alessio. Please. His mouth was on me again, searing away his promises. I did not doubt in my mind he was capable of it. It felt like he was trying to give me energy and power through his kiss, like he was capable of also taking away every single hurt that came my way while I was taken. He would always break away to whisper comforting words to me. Just a little longer, precious. Fight for me, fight for us. Don't let him break you. Precious. When I have you back in my arms, I will never let you go. You are my other half. You can't leave me. Not when I just found you. 
As he continued to comfort me, he would gently lie me down onto the bed or flower before his body was on mine. Strong, powerful, and made me feel so protected. He cupped me between my legs and groaned, knowing how wet I was under my dress. Open your eyes for me, precious. I opened my eyes at his demand and then froze. Standing before me was no longer Alessio. My blood ran cold and my body tensed. My heart was speeding, but it was for a completely different reason now. I wanted to hurl. I pushed him away, but he dug his finger hard into my hips while his other hand firmly gripped onto my hair. There's my little useless bird. Robert, I whispered. What's the matter, Ava? Did you think I was someone else? Naughty pigeon. I gasped, the side of my head in pain as a bright white light hit me at the same moment. Everything hurts. It was unimaginable. I swallowed, trying to comprehend where I was. Then everything came rushing forward that I wasn't dead yet. No, it was much worse than that. That everything was just a dream, and I was back to reality. And Robert had forcibly thrust three fingers into my core, causing me to whimper and claw at the floor. I needed to get away more than anything else, needed to. But everything hurts. I felt so dizzy, and with the collar around my neck tying me to the corner of the room, I would only get so far against his continued assault. Good morning, pigeon. Aren't you soaked this morning? He growled out a sinister smile on his face. Is this all for me? Were you dreaming about the times we spent together? His question always made my stomach churn. If I shook my head, he would beat me until I blacked out. If I nodded and lied, he would take me so roughly before beating me until I blacked out. With one hand trapping my wrists together, he held me down onto the dirty floor. It was full of dirt, blood and other bodily fluids that made me want to throw up again. They were all mine, and I knew he got a kick out of it. I wanted to empty my stomach again at the odor, but I can't. My body had nothing else to give anymore. I was constantly drifting in and out of consciousness, always praying I would never wake back up again. I was so tired. Robert stopped assaulting me just so he could straddle me, his thighs keeping me caged in. I could barely breathe under his full weight, my body protesting in pain. There was so much pain and no escape. He wrapped his arm around my neck, cutting off my air. I was terrified to see my blood on his fingers, coating my neck. I was bleeding from how hard he had taken me. And it only fueled his madness to break me. When I saw black spots in my vision, he released me, and I could barely breathe properly before he grabbed my breast hard. I choked out a scream, which was quickly rewarded with a fist in my jaw to silence me. My brain rattled, pain suffocating me. My vision blurred momentarily as he twisted my nipple so hard, I was crying. That's right baby, he groaned out. So fucking beautiful. He leaned over to lick away my tears, his cock digging into my stomach. I used what was left of my adrenaline to fight him off, but it was useless. I tried to bulk him off of him, as he took out his fat little cock from his pants. I can't wait to punish you little pigeon, he breathed because once I'm done with you, you'll finally break. And nothing feels any better than to have Alessio's one weakness be broken, isn't that right? He cooed into my ears. When I refused to lift my head to meet his eyes, he yanked hard onto the chained metal collar, and I yelped, the air is restricted. Answer me you fucking bitch. I whimpered, tears streaming down my face. Oh, I'm so sorry baby. I didn't mean to hurt you, he hushed. You just upset me, pigeon. You like to upset me, don't you? Running away from home, because I wasn't giving you enough attention. He is crazy. He lowered himself, his cold and wet mouth latched onto one of my battered nipples. It stung, no doubt that he ripped the skin of my aerials. My insides were turning in turmoil, trying to defend my weak body from the trauma. I had to swallow the bile in my sour mouth as I cried out in pain. Fuck, I knew you liked it rough, he said, grabbing my breast so hard I was sure it was going to be bruised tomorrow. He slides his hand up my battered legs, prying my legs open. I tried to fight, but I barely even have enough energy to keep my eyes open. I felt myself slipping into consciousness by the moment, 
wanting to go back to where Alessia was. He produced a small blade from his slack pockets and draws lines all over my wrists again, scaring me more and more. Since I was captured and brought back, he had taken away my beautiful bracelets Alessio had gotten me to cover up the scars. This scene has been censored due to YouTube's policies because it contains explicit content. If you want to read the full version, the ebook is available for sale now. Let's continue with the story. My vision starts to blur, and I knew I was drifting into unconsciousness. He grunted over me, emptying into me as I laid in my small puddle of puke. Just a little longer, precious. But how much longer can I take it before I break? 4. Alessio. One month later. In life, you could go into things with a plan or blindly in hopes for the best. Before I met Ava, I viewed life as a game of chess. Life is just one important choice after another. You have to make a move in order to have the potential of winning against your opponent. Knowing which move to make would come with knowledge. If you move too hastily, you're bound to lose. You had to strategize and prepare for your enemy's next move in order to win. Now, I was done waiting around. Tell me, have you ever played Russian roulette before? Antonio watched as I withdrew a revolver I had tucked into my pants and then flicked open the chamber. His eyes watched me like a hawk as I produced one bullet from my pocket. The dim light allowed the bullet casing to shine before I slid the bullet into the revolver chamber with a loud click that echoed around the room. I drew the revolver to my temples and pulled the trigger. It clicks, but the one loaded bullet doesn't come. This revolver was a gift from my father to my mother, I informed him, slow and steady. Now it's handed to me. My father Zavid was a sick fucker. But he knew what he was doing. It's why he was able to continue our empire. With each fire, the probability of it firing is one-sixth. You're a smart man, Antonio. You know the odds of it discharging becomes higher. By the sixth time, has a probability of 100%, but it may fire by the second round, of even the third. A low chuckle rumbled out of me. Look, he wheezed out. I really don't know where Ava is. But I can give you anything you want. Please just put me out of my misery and let me go. Let him go. I threw my head back and laughed at his begging. He had to be losing it if he were to think I would allow him to leave. He was crazier to think I'll let him die a painless death. He betrayed me, disrespected me, and had allowed my wife to be taken. He sold his daughter for protection, and he was abandoned with no help. An irony. I shook my head and snatched him by the collar before my fist landed straight at his jaw. He landed on the ground with a loud thud as he tried to flail under him. I took the revolver and shoved it onto his temple and fired. But it doesn't go off. I looked down to see that the weak fucker pissed his pants. I T S K E D. This would have been easier if you hadn't betrayed me. I don't, he swallowed trying again. I really don't know where she is. Let me tell you my dearest father-in-law, I began slowly. In the one month since I stepped down and letting Zavid run the show while I was hunting down every single Italian I could get my hands on, I realized something. I realized that the closest bet I would have is with you. That's why I'm here. Every single Italian was just sworn in and used as live bait. So I got smarter to hunt down the fucker. He watched me as I circled him, tapping the revolver on my chin as I continued. I started to research and really go after just about any of them for them to talk. I even went after your second in command. He was the one who actually said you knew more than you let on, because you think you could fool me. But you didn't expect us to throw you into the back of my car and transfer you to somewhere no one can rescue you since they don't know the location now that we have intercept all forms of communication you have with the outside world. Do you have anything to say to that? I turned to him, giving him my complete attention. PP please, he begged, his eyes becoming glossy from the pain and fear. His body was covered in welts, bruises, and what appeared to be an infection. It wouldn't take long for him to succumb to septic shock. 
My most trusted people in this estate each wanted to have a kick at Antonio for taking away Ava. Not only that, but for the pain he had caused to my family when I was a child. When they were a child. I was going to kill every single one who was in the house and eased my mother that day. Then, I'm going to kill every single one who had touched or caused pain to what is mine. And if it's every single Italian, then that's fine with me. You begging me would only make me angrier, I gritted out. The thought that Ava had probably begged for her father to save her from Robert was ringing in my ears. He knew about the abuse, and he didn't care. Now Karma was here to pay for retribution. I smashed my shiny red bottom leather shoes into his temples, and he whimpered while I pulled back the hammer and let it go off. It clicked, but it doesn't go off. Truth be told, I had never been this reckless, ruthless, and crazy like this. I was always calculated with a well-thought-out plan, much like with chess. If you did anything reckless, there would be consequences. Ava being gone did something to me, made me feel crazy and erratic. I didn't even care if it killed me. What was the point without my other half with me? Antonio continued to wail like a child, causing disgust in me. He was the second in command to the Italian mafia, and he was on the floor crying and pissing himself like a toddler. Weak, pathetic, and disgusting. His hair was matted onto his face, mixed with sweat and tears as I dug the revolver into his temple as I snarled out, Tell me. He's somewhere in Binghamton was what I was heard, he finally cried out. His voice was shaky and high-pitched. A densely wooded area, he has a hidden property, but I don't know anything else. He hides there sometimes or takes Ava there when she misbehaves. Fucking finally, Silas called out. I watched him walk over and takes the revolver from my hand. He shoved it right between his eyebrows and fired, but it doesn't go off. Nikolai chuckled in amusement while Rose and Alexei rolled their eyes. Silas brings it back to me and cursed. When will God take me? Get in line, I snickered and looked down at Antonio. Is that all? He nodded furiously. I swear. Anyone wants another go at him, just in case he's lying while I take a phone call back to Zavid? I offered as they all smiled madly back at me. Antonio's fingers were all broken, his pinky missing and bleeding out. Small puncture wounds from driving a screwdriver into his thighs were now oozing blood and puss. His legs were broken from when Rose propped his legs over the table, just to bash it outwards. He was in so much pain, I was surprised he didn't pass out. Closing the door, I took out my phone to make sure everything was running smoothly in the month I had been gone. From the looks of it, father was able to take over effortlessly. Although some of the families were wary, they respected both of us enough to allow for the change of power in the meantime while I looked for Ava. And if they had any problem with my wife, they could speak to me when I came back. Either with a bullet in their heads, or they were removed from the family. I didn't care what they wanted. As usual, it was the same old report for the past few weeks. Father even invited Dita to keep Anastasia company, since she wasn't allowed to come along. Everything okay? Father snorted on the other line. Same as usual. I forgot just how hectic it is running the empire, but it's also refreshing. How's your progress? Good. How's Anastasia? Code, we finally have a lead. We weren't taking any chances if either of our phones is bugged. I've always shortened her name to Anna, which she preferred. If I used her full name, it meant that we're closer to finally bringing Ava home. Hanging up, I went back to see everyone has a sick smile on their faces, with Antonio crying. I swear I don't. At that, I pulled the trigger. The room echoed loudly, as the spark from the bullet leaving the chamber lights up the room temporarily. Then, everything goes quiet. His body laid limp on the floor. His eyes laid open, fear and shock in his eyes having his life taken just like that. A twisted smile made its way to my face to see another person off my list. See you in hell, father-in-law. A few minutes after getting my men to dispose of and clean up the body, my phone rings. I stiffen, knowing well who it was. I signal a look at Silas, 
who nods in understanding as he quickly walked over to grab his laptop in an attempt to track him down. We've been trying every day. Every day I captured one of his men, and every day he would call it. If I didn't capture any of his men, he would personally call me on my phone. Every fucking day, I would hear Ava crying on the other line and making me feel more useless. Every day after hanging up, I had no choice to stare at the horrifying pictures that Robert had sent me, just to make sure Ava was alive before the anger takes over me and I destroy everything in sight. It was the only way that kept me going. To keep me motivated when all hope was lost. I answered the phone, pressing it close to my ear as the bile of anger raged inside of me. You know I won't stop until I slaughter every single one of your men and destroy every single one of your potential places you're hiding until I have Ava back in my arms, I informed him before he was able to say anything. I wasn't going to tell him we finally had a lead with the death of Antonio. I'll let him think he had the upper hand, and when I get my fucking hands on him, the unimaginable tortures came assaulting my head of what I wanted to do to him. How I'll prolong his death until he was begging. Even then, I won't stop. A chuckle came through the other line. And where has that gotten you? He taunted. Come out and fucking fight me straight on if you're a man, I yelled on the other line. I knew this was all a game to him. He knew about my only weakness being Ava, and perhaps that was the reason why he kept her alive this whole time. But I knew once I find him, I was going to make him have a long, painful death. I would, but what fun would that be? I enjoy this game of ours, he laughed. It was eerily quiet on the other line for once, and I didn't like it. Not to mention, it's been a fun two months of catching up with my fiancé. My little pigeon. Isn't that right? Unlike the other times he's called where Ava would whimper, cry and wail, there was nothing but silence this time. Not even a small amount of whimper, and my stomach churned. What the fuck did you do to Ava? If you're asking if she's alive, he commented with a pause. Yes, but I've finally done it. I've done the thing I've waited years to do. Breaking her to be my obedient, beautiful porcelain doll. And it's all thanks to you. The hell is that supposed to mean? Because you gave her freedom and hope, I was able to strip it all. And the cherry on top was the last few things you said to her. It helped to break her in when she thinks she's nothing to you. After all, isn't that what you said, he threw on my face. I just reminded her over and over, until she broke. When I get my fucking hands on you, you'll wish you were never born, I roared. It wasn't a threat, it was a promise. Everyone around me had the same murderous look on their face as me. They didn't know what Robert had said, but seeing me enraged only fueled their anger. That's an if, he mocked. I'll send you a picture later to say thank you. She's beaten, with no emotion on that beautiful face of her. I've clipped every single one of your Ava's feathers so she won't ever fly again. With that the line was dead. I refused to believe any of his words. Ava was strong, the strongest woman I've ever met. She wouldn't give up so easily, not without a fight. She was stubborn. There was no way that she would break so easily. I wouldn't even allow that thought in my head. So what's the plan? Silas said as I fought the urge to destroy. I threw my third phone of the month onto the floor, smashing it into tiny pieces. No one batted an eye as Silas continued speaking. Antonio said he's hidden somewhere in Binghamton, in a wooded area. It's a hidden property, so we have no clue what we're dealing with or where to even start. I was able to get a ping near there while you were on the phone. So what should we do? I was done waiting around for my enemy's next move, like in chess. After all, in the real world, what fool would wait for their enemy's turn when it was presented right in front of you? 5. Alessio. Two days later. The bungee cloud opening is deemed to be one of the worst openings in chess. It breaks all sorts of common sense rules that are normally used in opening, that it becomes ironically funny. It starts by moving your pawn that's in front of your king, protecting it up. 
By doing so, it prevents the king to be castled, endangering the king, ignoring the development and center. Not only that, but it'll block the queen and bishop, which are the two pieces that are free after moving the pawn. It's preparing for an early endgame. Yet, it's great for learning defensive strategy if you're able to pull it off. So crazy that it just might work. And that was what I was going to use to get my wife back. This time, I was never letting her go. I was going to show her how much I love her, and keep her safe from everything else, whether she liked it or not. She was mine. It was a vicious cycle constantly between the whole ordeal. I felt like I was losing my mind. Nothing but pain, anger and anguish plagued me. Sometimes, I felt like I was choking on it that I couldn't breathe. The anger residing in me only grew worse over time, as I took it out on any Italian I was able to get my hands on, to get Robert. I would kill them all for my little Ava. I would wrap it in a fucking bow if she wanted to. I'll give her the damn world, killing anyone that dared stand in my way to possess her. And now, I was close to getting her back. For the past two days we were all working endlessly to get her back. We made sure we were ready for war. I called in every favor, after finding out the property Antonio claimed was in the densely wooded area in Binghamton. I couldn't waste another moment, and quickly assembled a plan. I didn't call any backup, in case it tipped anyone off. Everyone has been tensed since we had gotten into the car. The estate was almost depressing and quiet without Ava's presence, and I sometimes wondered how we ever functioned without her there. Everyone worked hard to make sure we could bring her home, which pride swelled in me. They wouldn't say it, but they thought of her as their queen already. Even Rose and Nikolai, who were fond of making it known to hate her was more on edge. When I sensed the car turning into rocky terrain, I knew we were there. Everyone's face hardened as it comes to a full stop, and a small house come into our view. I just prayed Ava was alive, and Robert didn't expect shit. When I get my hands on the fucker, I would make him the most insufferable torture unimaginable. I turned to everyone, nodding at them. You ready? I asked. Everyone nodded, prepared for whatever was there. Jumping out of the car, I assessed what we were going to be dealing with. The house seemed to be abandoned, and on the verge of caving itself in. Graffiti, empty little baggies, and syringes littered the perimeter. There seemed to be no life, which could only mean two things. The first would be Antonio gave us a dead lead. Or the second, which I refused to believe, was Robert found out we were coming and took Ava with him. On my nod, Nikolai kicked down the door and we swarmed the place in masses. If the outside was bad, the inside was even worse. The smell was horrid. Dust covered the whole place along with dead leaves since all the windows were shattered. The floorboard creaked with each step anyone took. Everyone had their guns raised. Silas and Rose nodded towards the second floor and with my clearance, they went up. We quickly checked each nook and cranny, and by the time we regrouped, I was on edge at the reality of things. We have no leads. And Antonio was dead. Robert isn't here, Rose called out. She comes back down, shaking her head. There's no signs of anyone here at one point or another. Seems junkies come here to get high with how many syringes we found, but nothing. No signs of Ava either from my end, Nikolai replied, coming in from another room. I don't like this place. It smells like utter shit and it's giving me the creep. That's saying something coming from me. Checked everything we could find, Silas confirmed. It's a two-story house. Been abandoned for years with no signs of human life. So either Antonio is pulling your legs as the last laugh before his death, or Robert left already. Did you look at the whole area? No basement or anything else? I asked, the temper in my body rising when they shook their head. This was another dead end. Ava wasn't in my arms, and another day was gone without her back. Son of a fucking bitch. At that, I took an old table on the side and lunged it onto the floor. It goes down with a loud bang. No one said anything as I tried to calm myself down. The dead leaves fell from the table and onto the battered-looking wooden floor. It shifted slightly on the floor and I froze. 
I stared, befuddled for a minute. There was no wind blowing right now, dot yet they were moving. Realization dawned upon me. There's air coming out of the floorboard. Limitedly, I wedged my hands between them and pulled. I thought there would be a struggle, but the floorboard came up without a fight. Without another second wasted, everyone pulled up the board one by one, and then we went quiet. This leads downstairs to a hidden passageway, Silas acknowledged. He took out his phone and shined it downwards. It illuminated an old creaky stairwell going straight down into the darkness, and the bile in my throat raised. My worst fear seemed to be coming true. Holy shit, Rose whispered. Do you think? Has to be, Alexei replied. But I don't think it'll be any better. Be on high alert, I commanded as we all descended the stairs. With each step I took, my mind kept racing with the unimaginable. The first thing that hit me was the smell of the cellar. It reeked of vomit, urine and waste that made me want to puke. It was so strong, it was almost choking without any sort of ventilation. Alexei and Silas went to cover their nose as I looked around. Was Ava down here? Was she kept under these conditions? With each step we took, I knew this could be a trap. But I didn't care. My heart beat wildly in my chest. She had to be here. When we got to the end of the narrow cellar, I almost went on my knees at the sight of what was in front of me. Ava was there in front of me after almost two months. Precious, I choked at the sight of her. She didn't lift her head, didn't do anything but lie there as if she was already dead. Her body was covered in various cuts, bruises, and welts. Her worse were her arms, and it almost made my stomach churned. There was a collar on her neck, keeping her in place. I rushed towards her, falling onto my knees as I cupped her tiny body. No no no. She was barely breathing like she was fighting to even put oxygen in her lungs. She looked so broken and too cold for my liking. I feared she was going to take her last breath in my arms. She was naked, her ribcage showing through. Her hair was matted to her face with a thick amount of unknown substance. My heart was pounding erratically, as I was only focused on her. Nothing else mattered. Baby you're okay now, I whispered my voice thick and hoarse. I never once had tears prick my eyes until this moment. I had felt nothing but pain in my chest the last two months, but seeing her like this now only amplified it. She suffered all alone because of me. Because I wasn't able to keep her safe. I buried my face onto the crook of her neck. You're safe. No one will ever fucking lay a hand on you again. Okay? I didn't know how long I was in my frenzied state. I knew she wasn't conscious, but it didn't matter. I needed her to know that I was there now. I wasn't going anywhere like the lies Robert had fed her for two months. I kept murmuring promises into her ears, hoping it'll be enough for her to forgive me. So she could open up those pretty eyes of hers. I didn't know how long it was, but everyone else's voice sounded distant. I wanted them all to go away. It wasn't until Rose spoke that snapped my attention back to reality. Alessio, you need to get Ava out in case he comes back. It's not safe for her. Rose approached from behind me and places her sweater over her thin body. I stared up at her, and then my men who were shoulders all sagged when they realized I was back from wherever I was. She's barely breathing. You need to go right fucking now. Do you hear me, Alessio? We need to leave before he comes back in case he has backup. We can't risk her and you in this state. We all can't risk it, we're going to be outnumbered. Alessio and you should head back first, Silas remarked. He yanked hard onto the chain tying Ava to the wall, before cursing. Nikolai produced a rather large blade, and in one swift movement, he breaks it as Silas continued. He might have some shit here, that might be useful to track down the fucking bastard. I'm not going till I check every single spot in this damn house. I know the risk and I don't give two flying shit. I'm staying with Silas for lookout, Rose said. For all we know, this place could be rigged to explode or he's waiting to ambush us, and we can't take any chances with you and her. I'll come to get you both after, Nikolai said. Once you're done, stay hidden outside. I don't know what Robert may bring. Both Silas and Rose nodded. 
Okay, Nikolai get us back to the estate so Ava can get help and then come get them back, I managed, though my head was spinning. I got up, not liking how light Ava was in my arms. I pressed her body that was barely covered, closer to me. I didn't have time to waste as Rose said. I was still there pecan. Alexei, call Dr. Benzo. We need all nurses and doctors we can in an hour. I don't care how you make it happen. Got it. Alexei immediately fished out his phone and started calling. Snapping myself out of my thoughts, I quickly made my way with Nikolai and Alexei covering. Climbing into the back seat, I shifted till I knew Ava was comfortably seated between my legs. She was so fragile and tiny like anything could blow her away. Alexei slid into the front with Nikolai behind the wheel. Neither of us exchanged a word as we sped back to the estate. You're going to be okay, Ava, I whispered, but I didn't know who I was trying to comfort at this point. It was the first time since the fire that took my mother, I felt utterly useless. Violence was something that I used to solve everything, but not in this situation. I had no idea where Robert was. And Ava's shallow breathing didn't make me feel any less angry at the world. Gently, I cupped her cheeks and laid a kiss on her pale lips. I finally have her back after two months, but was I too late? I refused to believe what Robert had said. We're going to make it through it. She has to survive because there's no other option. 6. Ava it was warm and soft. I felt like I was floating. It was rather strange and foreign to me. I didn't feel pain. Nothing ached for once. I got up from where I was and looked around aimlessly. There was nothing in sight for miles. Gently I moved my arm and legs. All the bruises, welts and broken bones were fixed. My arms weren't scarred. When I touched my neck, there was no heavy metal collar either. I wasn't trapped in the dark and filthy cellar that I started to refer to as my cage. Getting up, I wandered around without direction trying to collect my thoughts. Was I dead? I stared at my own hands, tilting my head to the side. Who was I? What was my name again? I kept trying to find out who I was as I wandered until something appeared on my line of vision. Or at least it was something. Her back was turned, but she was familiar. I quietly walked up, the sense of familiarity driving me forward in a race to ease my mind of where I am and who am I. Finally she turned, and my breath got caught in my throat. Tears pricked at my eyes as I covered my mouth. Mother? Hi baby, she smiled at me. It was the kind that warmed your heart. She didn't seem to age for even a moment. Neither one of us said anything. I was too stunned to walk, frozen in place as I took more of her in. Her beautiful hair fell over her shoulder, resting just above her hips. Her face looked fuller, and the bags under her eyes were gone. She looked happy for once, free from any form of suffering she faced in the hands of my father. You've grown so much since the last time I saw you. I nodded, noticing there was a strong bright light behind her. It radiated warmth and safety, something I've been craving for months. Now, everything that I've been asking for is just a few feet away. Without another thought, I lifted my foot to take a step towards her when a voice rang loud in my head. You are my other half. You can't leave me. Not when I just found you. I stopped midway, my foot still raised to take another step forward. Someone was calling me. I turned my head back, trying to remember who it was. His voice was rough but warm. It made me feel so safe. It made me feel safer and warmer than the light behind Mother. It made me want to run back just to hear him speak again. Unlike the monster I was with, he was the exact opposite. Does such a person exist? Why does his voice soothe me? Why does it sound familiar? I guess it's not your time yet, isn't it? My mother said. I snapped my attention back at her to see her smiling at me. I loved her smile more than anything else. Yet, I couldn't find it in me to take another step towards where she was. Instead she seems to float towards me and cups my cheeks. He loves you, Ava. Ava. Yes, that was my given name. It was given by my mother. Ava Genovese. 
I frowned at my last name, noticing how off it sounded. It didn't sound right at all. Was that my last name? Or did I go by something else? The more I thought, the more the pain in my heart and head started. No, I didn't want to feel. I wanted to forget and be happy. I didn't want to remember, that only led to crying and heartbreak. I finally placed my foot down, ready to take another step towards what was behind my mom. It was an endless bright light. It seems to be warm and inviting, seeming to melt away all my problems I wanted to forget. I was so tired, so. Precious, when I have you back in my arms I will never let you go. Precious. Again I stopped in my tracks. The pull becomes stronger, but I didn't want to budge back or move forward. Going back means going back to the pain of living. I was tired. I wanted to not think or suffer anymore. But it also meant finding out why that voice made my heart stir crazily. He's calling you, Ava. You should return back to him, mother said. I have no idea who she was talking about. Yet the way she seemed so happy for us like she trusted him to take care of me made me feel a bit at ease. Who's he? You'll remember. She then laid a kiss on my forehead, and then tears gathered in her eyes. I'm always with you, okay? Stay strong like Joe from Little Women. Stay strong for both of us, okay? I'm scared, I finally found my voice. I gripped onto her, tears blurring my vision. It was too soon to say goodbye. Why did you have to leave me? Baby, she whispered. I'm sorry I left you, but I'm always with you from here on out. I'm so proud of who you've become. Because you were there with me, every day shone so brightly. Don't give up. Please continue to live. Live to the fullest, with no regrets for the both of us. I don't want to, I said shaking my head. But I knew I wasn't fooling anyone, especially when I heard whoever was calling me again. It was louder, the pain in his voice so loud my heart ached. I wanted to go to him and hold him close. But was he calling me? Who's his other half? Who's this precious person he's talking about? Who is he to someone broken like me? His voice becomes louder, his voice thick with emotions. Ava? Wake up please. Fuck baby you can't leave me. Not like this. There's still so much I want to say to you. Please precious. You're my other half. How can I fucking go without my other GN? Tears finally started to well in my eyes. He was talking about me. He was my GN bird, the other half I needed in order to fly. Every single being on this earth was born with one wing. It needed their other half to truly thrive. Could I be enough? Go, mother said. No, I love you with all my heart. When we meet again, preferably after you live a long life with that man, you can tell me everything. I'll wait baby. Be happy. I nodded. I love you too. With that, turned back without another thought running full speed. It was almost instinct to go to where his voice was. I wasn't floating anymore. No, I was flying to him with my one wing. The sound of beeping made me stir just slightly, until I realized I felt trapped between something warm. I blinked slowly, my vision appearing blurry momentarily, before I could focus on what was in front of me. I took in the scent of cedar wood with a hint of vanilla, and I blinked through the daze. The room was so bright compared to what I'm used to. I turned my head gently, and my whole body protested at the movement. There's a man on my side, fast asleep. He'd fallen asleep, his body hunched over with our hand barely touching. I couldn't quite see his face from my angle. Though from what I got out of it, his jawline is covered in scuff, and his features were worn and tired even as he dozed. There are deep eye bags as if he's in pain, haunted by something. Gently, I reached out to brush his hair out of his eyes when he snapped up. He looked confused momentarily, before his eyes met a pair of eyes so blue and deep, that you can swim in them and never get to the end of it. It was full of concern, relief, and something else I never saw on anyone else but mothers. Who was he? Then his face broke into the most beautiful, breathtaking smile. There you are, precious, he whispered like he couldn't believe I was awake and in his presence. 
I blinked a few times, trying to figure out who he is as he continued talking. You worried me. You were out for almost two weeks and gave me a heart attack. I stared at the beautiful man, and I realized just how tired he was with how dark the bags under his eyes were. His hair is unruly and a mess. His white shirt is unbuttoned and shriveled, yet I can't look away from the look in his eyes. It shined brightly with love, compassion and concern. Yet, there's also a dark monster looming in his eyes too. Is there such thing as a perfect man in this world that is both strikingly handsome and scary as well? I looked around the room, taking in my surroundings. It was too bright and vivid. Something about it caused me into drawing back into myself, where it was darker. Where I didn't need to think or feel any sort of pain. Darkness was a place where I couldn't see, and it was better than here. I have no idea how long I was in my head before his voice snapped my attention back to him. His eyebrow knit together in confusion when I don't talk. Precious, it's me, Alessio. I stared at him like he was crazy. Or maybe I am because I have no idea who he is. I blinked several times, refusing to speak. Speaking only led to pain. Baby, talk to me, please. I turned my head in time to see his hands reaching towards me, and my whole body flinched. The thought of anyone touching me reminded me of the pain that would come with it. My body started to shake violently in response, before my eyes went to see his reaction. His whole face twisted into one of pain, and he withdrew his hands quickly as my stare burned him. The mere thought of him or anyone touching me was enough to set my heart into overdrive. The bile feeling started to rise up from my chest. Weakly, I bought my hands up to my neck, trying and failing to get oxygen down my throat. Am I dying? Ava, he asked, concern marring his beautiful face. I whimper, bringing my head down to my drawn knees as my head throbbed. The beeping sound became louder as I clutch at my chest. I pull hard on the tubes, trying to retreat into my head as I ignored the searing pain all over my body. Everything burned, but it was better than the pain I had in my chest. I heard a bunch of noises before someone tried to touch me. It was enough to make me go hysterical. I'm clawing at my skin, the beeping only making my head hurt more. I didn't need this. I didn't want to feel anything. I just I want them all to go away. Why can't they do that? Was this another game? Shut what the fuck is wrong with her, one person hissed. There's too much noise and panic. Ava? Are you okay? Talk to me, a woman voice choked out. Someone's touching me, and I immediately jerked away, pushing whoever away from me. The beeping only got worse, along with the throbbing in my head and suffocation. Where was Robert? I need him. I need him to take me back to the darkness. I didn't want to think or feel. Get Dr. Benzo, someone snarled. I felt compression in my chest, almost choking me, along with my ragged breathing. I kept attacking myself in hopes this would just all be a nightmare. Then someone is holding me. I fought against their touch, because I knew what would come next is the pricking feeling that would burn my body. He's going to hurt me. He's going to make me sick. Whoever it was made sure to grip hard onto my wrist, stopping me from further harm. They laid my hands onto their chest, and for a split second all I can focus on was how fast their heart is beating. It's the same as mine. I hyperforced on that instead, willing myself to calm down. Why was this person's heart speeding as fast as mine? Was the beautiful man the one holding me? I didn't know any more. I just wanted to all end. I just wanted death. Dying was easier than living. I didn't want to fight. The last thing I heard before succumbing to darkness was the beautiful man's voice. What did he do to you? 7. Alessio. What? Amnesia, it seems like, Dr. Benzo repeated, staring at his clipboard. Everyone has gathered around in my office, just across from my room, where Ava was still asleep. We've all been anxious about what was wrong with Ava, especially me. My heart is still a mess when I think of the damage she had caused herself before losing consciousness yesterday. She had awoken earlier today, 
yet refused to look at anyone. We were able to deduce before we called Dr. Benzo over was her fear of being touched. When Anastasia got near her she still tensed, but it wasn't as bad. She refused to talk, eat, or acknowledge anyone either. How certain are you? Silas questioned. Dr. Benzo cleared his throat, fixing his glasses before continuing. Seeing how she won't speak, I can't comprehend her mindset so I can't say for sure. However, she understood my questions, which is a good sign. Though judging by how confused and overwhelmed she is, I'm going to assume she doesn't remember any of you carefully. Is there something wrong with her vocal cords? I asked concerned. He shook his head. No, I've taken every medical evaluation I can. She had some broken bones and bruises that would take time to heal. Her vital organs are very much functioning and well, but it's her mental state I'm concerned about. It seems to be selective mutism, far as I know so far. It can be a way to cope when she was under Robert's torment, but I can't say for sure. So you're saying that she's choosing to be mute, and she has no clue who the fuck we are, Nikolai threw in, his legs bobbing erratically for staying in one position too long. So we're starting from scratch. Well possibly, he concurred. I don't know to what extent her brain remembers. Is it permanent? Anastasia asked next to me. The room was too quiet, with a dark cloud looming over us. My brain is on overdrive, knowing that although we got Ava back, she suffered something under Robert that caused her to become withdrawn. My hands clenched so hard that my knuckles turned white as Dr. Benzo sighed. It's hard to say. Amnesia can be temporary or permanent. I would say give her time to adjust to these changes. Try not to overwhelm her too much, but carry on like you were when she was here. Daily activities can stimulate and job her memories, he told us as he tucked his clipboard under his arms. Though I would say she should rest for now. And why was she having a hard time breathing before? Silas questioned. She had a panic attack it seems, he said, looking over Ava's diagnostic again. He gave us a curious look at each one of us. Since I wasn't there, I'm not sure what would have caused it. Any idea what may have led up to it? I tried to touch her, I mumbled, the words sounding tormented as I recalled the look on her face. It's something I never wanted her to make again. It was haunting, and tugged at a depth of my soul to burn everything down for her. The need to find Robert and kill every person in any relation to him before locking her up ate me up, when I felt how fast her heart was racing out of fear for me touching her. I've touched her every night to keep my nightmares at bay, making sure I wasn't hallucinating and that she was there. Ever since we've gotten her back, I've requested to move her to my room two weeks ago so I can make sure she wouldn't wake up confused and alone. Whenever her eyebrows furrowed as if she had a bad dream, I would hold her close, gently rubbing my fingers between her eyebrows until she calmed down. I wanted to ease her in the same way she did for me. Dr. Benzo didn't look surprised by my comment. Seeing the extent of her physical abuse when she was captured, I'm not too surprised. Her brain might be blocking the trauma, and her body too. It may be best for now, to leave her alone and allow her to adjust to old life without triggering her slowly. So pretend as if she never was captured. Alexei asked, furrowing his eyebrows together. Dr. Benzo shook his head. No, more like make her feel at home again. Give her a routine she was used to before. It'll help with calming her down since she is fully aware and conscious of everything. Baby steps at a time. While I'm at it, I would say to put her on a rich diet to help her gain back weight. What if she still won't eat? Rose asked, much to everyone's surprise. She had made it more than clear about her distaste for Ava. She refused to look at any of us as her focus was on Dr. Benzo. Give her till tonight to see if she'll eat on her own. If she still isn't, then I'll hook her up to an IV, he replied, getting up from his seat. Ava had been drifting in and out of sleep the whole day. She had recently woken back up just 30 minutes ago when Dr. Benzo went to see her. Well, he had to stand about 10 feet away from her, or else her heart starts kicking into overdrive again. He'll coax her to answer some question, which she would blankly ignore, or her eyes would gloss over before she would respond with the tiniest nod or headshake. 
It took three nurses to make her feel safe enough before she was willing to allow them to check her body physically. Is there anything else we should know about what we should do about her? Nikolai asked, leaning into the armchair as his legs bounced back and forth. He's already on his breaking point with the way he's drumming his fingers against the armrest. It must have been hard for him to sit still, yet he was willing to stay to hear about her. Pride swelled to see them care much for their queen, despite her Italian blood. Like what we should or shouldn't do. The only thing I can give right now is to take things at her pace, he informed us. Now should she awake and have another episode, please let me know. So long as you don't touch her until she's ready, she should be fine. Easier said than done. Thank you for your time Dr. Benzo, Anastasia gratefully said. Nonsense, she's Alessio's wife, which means she's family. We look after one another, he flicked off the comment. As he took his leave after leaving a few medications to help soothe Ava, we all slumped our shoulders while Silas passed a lighter around as they lit their cigar. Opening up the window, I pinched the bridge of my nose. As if we didn't have enough on our plates. Fucking Christ. Tell me about it, Silas murmured, running his fingers through his hair before tugging at the end. He took a drag of his cigar, while Alexei goes to pour himself a drink from the cabin. Everyone looked more than exhausted than we have been for weeks. We still don't have a damn lead of where Robert is, either. It doesn't matter, Rose pointed out, leaning onto the wall's side. By the way, the Italian family are falling apart right now, it won't take long before either Robert gets caught in the crossfire and killed. Or became the new ruler, Silas interjected. That was the last thing we needed. Robert was a ruthless person, capable of doing anything for power. There's no saying what things he might do if he's crowed to be the new capo regime, the boss of the Sicilian Mafia. The Italian Mafia has been growing alarmingly more powerful, and I needed to crush them before it got out of hand. It was perfect because once I crush Robert, everything will crumble as I take complete control. We'll think about this tomorrow. Let's just focus on Ava tonight, Alexei intervened. He downed a shot along with Nikolai before nodding at me. What will you be doing with her? Same as I've been doing the last two weeks since I got her back, I shrugged. Keeping an eye on her to make sure nothing happened. But of course, now that we found out what exactly we're dealing with, our focus is now between finding out where Robert is, killing the motherfucker, and getting Ava's memories back. There's a silence that loomed over at my last agenda. And I know what everyone was thinking. Yet neither chose to voice their question that went through everyone's head. We didn't want there to be a choice where Ava would never heal from this. Because I know her, I know she's stronger than that. She may have gotten her wings broken, but she had me to lean on. There's no way I'm allowing her to hide in her golden cage when she deserved to see the world. Will you be okay watching Ava by yourself tonight? Nikolai asked warily. It's past one in the morning, and everyone looked to be tired and on edge. As if we thought this nightmare would be put behind us, now that we've got Ava back. She had been out all of yesterday as I held her close, but now that she was awake, there's no telling what she would do. Either way, I'm not going to give up on her. Yeah, I nodded. Don't worry about it. If you need anything, would you let us know, right? Anastasia narrowed her eyes suspiciously at me. I rolled my eyes, though judging from everyone else giving me the same pointed look, they knew I had a hard time asking for help when it revolved around my wife. Hell, I've lost more sleep and became enraged twice as quickly when we just got Ava back, and she didn't wake up. I'm almost sure that Rose still held a grudge when I lost it on her. Yes, I muttered, though it didn't seem they reasonably believed me. Yet, they all didn't try in trying to take me away from Ava. They knew better, I wouldn't listen either. Even when she was in and out of sleep, I stayed with her. She refused to lift her head or acknowledge my presence, focusing her attention on the bedsheets. As if she's trying to hide. I'll never stop until I get her back. Pull her back from wherever her mind went. Shrugging off my suit jacket, I went back to my room where she'd be. Ava's no longer hooked onto any machines now, as she laid on our bed. She was still too frail and thin for my liking. 
Her cheeks are too hollow, and I could see her bones. The scarring around her wrists was worse, the two bands I've given her were stripped. Her face is pale and wasn't lifelike at all. I hated how she looked, hated how if I didn't focus on her breathing, she would have looked as if she's dead. Her eyes were focused out the window, and my heart soared momentarily. Even though she may not remember much, her soul still did. She's still drawn to the outside world, despite her not remembering it. Which meant Ava was still somewhere in there. I didn't want to disturb her as I quietly homed into what she saw and heard. It's weird even to think I was able to see things in another light thanks to her. I knew she could sense me, yet she refused to acknowledge me. When I shut the door behind us she instantly tensed, and it wrecked my heart. The urge to destroy everything in my path as I got near her. I didn't give a shit how many people I killed, so long as she felt safe. Ava. Her whole body flinched, and my heart contracted painfully in my chest. She refused to look at me, not even turning her head. Almost as if she's trying to escape in the back of her head. There were so many things I wanted to say to her. So many things I planned for months to beg and apologize until she forgave me for everything I've done before she was taken. Yet right now, it would mean nothing if she didn't even acknowledge who I was. I wavered between sleeping next to her or on the couch across from her. Without her being hooked up to any machines, the need to hold her close overrode with whatever seemed to be the most logical. I had been doing nothing more than sleeping for just mere hours at a time, getting up to check on her or even talk to her. There had been days I spoke to her as if she was awake, reliving memories of us together. There had been days where I screamed and begged for her to wake up. Now. I didn't know what my next steps should be. She didn't look my way even as I changed in front of her. I could see the way she tensed in seeing me in just boxers before opting for a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. It just eased her for a bit as I crawled into bed with her. Immediately, her whole body seized up. Sorry, I'll sleep on this side of the bed. I won't touch you, I soothingly told her. I hoped it's enough not to send her panicking. I didn't dare to move from my side, watching her every move like a hawk. She doesn't speak. She doesn't even turn to look at me. No, she's focused on whatever caught her attention outside. I home in, trying to take in whatever had caught her attention. I realized that from my window, we could see into the greenhouse perfectly. My heart soars, and I dare to believe that there's something about it that caught some sort of memory. When she had been gone, I made sure Anastasia had been tending to it. Do you want to visit the greenhouse tomorrow? So many of the flowers you've been planted had finally bloomed, I mumbled. I held my breath when she turned. Her eyes were so dull and hollow. Those lush green eyes that were always full of hope and curiosity were nowhere in sight. She warily looked at me, confused, and the walls around her heart were up. My heart seizes as I continue. I think you'll enjoy the hydrangeas. They're your favorite, aren't they? Again, because my wife is the most stubborn person I know, she doesn't reply. Instead, confusion swirls in her eyes, along with fear and anxiousness. If I could, I would have taken it all away. I didn't want her to ever feel like that again. I wanted to bring her back out of her shell. I was going to spoil her rotten. I wouldn't rest until she gained her memories back. If you're wondering why you don't have your own room, I tell her, it's because you don't find it comfortable to sleep in the dark by yourself. You don't like it. You like sleeping next to me. So I won't do anything. Not to mention you were almost raped there. The last thing I want is for you to be reminded. I see the way her eyes grow heavier over time. Yet just as she's about to succumb to sleep, she would force her eyes back to me before glancing away. Even when she didn't want to, her eyes always found mine. It takes everything in me not to reach out and hold her close. After months, I wanted nothing more than to keep her close. My heart feels as if it's beating again, even just slightly. Would it make you feel better if I were to handcuff myself to one side of the bed? I couldn't help but ask, just half joking. If that's what it takes for me to lie in the same bed as my other half, then I'll do just about anything. I could see that she's already drifting. 
A part of me was convinced it was because she trusts me enough. Or am I just having wishful thinking? Finally, her eyes close, and her breathing evens out after a while. Yet, I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. Not when Ava's plagued with nightmares every so often. Her body would flinch and spaz while she whimpered, cried and pleaded. Each time, I would hold her close. She didn't even notice, too wrapped up with whatever is keeping her locked in an endless void. Finally, I could do nothing else but hold her, rocking her until she would calm just enough. I love you, I murmured over her temples. I swear I'll bring you back, precious. 8. Ava. A week. It's been a week since I've been dragged out of the dark, and I didn't like it. A week of being in the light, when I wanted nothing more than to retreat in the back of my mind. I wanted the darkness to consume me, as it had before. I craved not being able to feel anything in my heart, as I curled up in the corner of the basement I'd been used to. I yearned for not being able to think or feel anything. I missed the devil. For a week, I was visited every day by different people. They were all so bright and wanted to talk to me constantly. There's a girl, Anastasia, from what I remember her telling me, or the estate's chef and head maid. She kept talking and encouraging me to eat. Yet each time, I would only shun her along with everyone else away in hopes that I could retreat to the back of my mind. My body constantly ached, and I was forced to move even though I wanted to hide away. Then there's Silas and another man named Nikolai. They would often keep their distance, looking at me from a distance to make sure I was okay before walking off. Every time they came too close, I would always tense and convulse. There's another woman as well, who wouldn't say a word to me. She would simply glance at me before leaving. I often found myself wanting to close the doors and window, so it would imitate the constant I've been used to for the past few weeks before they dragged me out. Whenever I felt too much, I would often hide under the bed or in the corner. Each time, I would have no choice but coaxed out by Alessio Sokolov. He's the Russian leader and my lawfully wedded husband. I couldn't believe it. After all, I have been betrothed to the devil for as long as I can remember. It didn't make sense at all why he kept calling to me. Yet when he found me hiding or in pain, it looked like he was physically in pain. In return a dull ache would be felt in my heart as well, almost as if his pain is mine. What I hated most was how my body felt around him. I didn't find it comfortable for others to be near me. My body would reject it, sweating, and the need to vomit would overtake me. Yet, Alessio was the only one able to get close enough to me. He would often hold me close, and rather than tensing as I did with the devil, I would only relax before I caught myself in doing so. My stubborn wife, he would chuckle before kissing the top of my head. His eyes often shined whenever he spoke to me like I was his everything. I usually would look away, hating what he was going to me as he questioned me. What are you thinking of? Again, I would refuse to answer him. Finally, when I didn't say anything, he would only catch my chin and gently tip my head so I was looking at him once more. He was frowning slightly, his brows bumped together before my eyes found him again. He would then smile, rubbing his nose against mine. Keep your pretty eyes on me, okay? I don't like it when you look away from me, he commented. I drew a sharp breath as another acute pain raked my skull. I've heard him say those words before. It felt like centuries ago now, as my body felt like it was on fire. So it was when he made love to me. It was different when he touched me, compared to the devil. When the devil touched me, everything hurt. With him it's a constant craving I couldn't satisfy. Alessio kept me company for the seven days, barely leaving my side unless it was necessary. He prompted me up in his arms, reading to me. He would ask me whimsical questions and bring me to places around the estate to coax me into talking. My favorite place became the greenhouse, and he seemed to notice as we would often find ourselves there. He'd let me walk around, his eyes focused on me as if he couldn't quite believe I was here. I couldn't either. Every night, I would find myself waking up screaming and my heart feeling like it was going to give out. 
The nightmares only get worse, and more often or not, I begged for my heart to stop beating. I prayed for the pain to stop. I didn't want to feel anymore, and it seems I am whenever I'm with the man he called my husband. Usually, my morning consists of Alessio gently peppering me with kisses before I start stirring. I'm still not used to waking up with him next to me. I didn't like how my body seemed so relaxed and content whenever he was around me. I hated touch, and yet with Alessio I'm slowly starting to crave it more. The flinching wasn't as bad anymore, and his touch soothed me more than anything else. His eyes would glisten and shine whenever I slowly opened my eyes as he whispered in my ears. Good morning, precious. Oddly enough, this morning, I awoke alone. A frown crept its way to my face as I rubbed the sleep in my eyes. I looked around in a daze before my eyes landed on the grandfather clock. I had well slept past my usual morning routine. Slowly I shuffled upwards just in time for a knock to be heard. I never understood why they felt the urge to knock, as this estate wasn't mine. I wasn't anything more than deserved my privacy, after all. A few seconds later, Anastasia popped her head in, and my shoulders sagged a bit in disappointment before I could stop myself. I thought it would be Alessio, despite me not wanting to see him at the same time. He was a dangerous one, maybe even more frightening than the devil with how he makes me feel. Good morning, Ava, Anastasia chirped, beaming at me. Are you hungry? At that, I shook my head gently. My mind wavered on why she was here. I wouldn't see Anastasia or the others unless it was time for supper. I'm still used to answering people when being spoken to, but it made everyone so happy, as if I had given them the cure for an incurable disease that I started answering in the forms of head nodding or shaking. Well, what do you want to do today? Actually, you should brush your teeth and get ready first. She continued to talk, filling in the silence. She tilted her head to the side. I'll pick you up in ten minutes then, so you can have some time to get ready. I think Nikolai isn't awake yet either, so I have to drag his lazy ass up. But first, you have to eat a bit, so I made your favorite oatmeal with berries with avocado toast if you're up for it. Do you remember it being your favorite? I meekly shake my head. It was hard shaking my head, because Robert hated it whenever I said no to him. He would have the sickest smile on his face as his hand wrapped around my neck. He liked it when I told him no because it made my punishment worse, especially when I begged him to stop, bile formed in my throat as I swallowed the lump in my throat. That's okay, she conceded when she realized my breathing became shallower. I'm sorry for pushing you. I'll be back soon, okay? I hated how her voice was cracking when she spoke before she hurried off. It's another thing I didn't understand about her. Sometimes, she would have this guilty look in her eyes that I didn't know why it was there in the first place. It's like she had done something to me, which I didn't remember anyway. Wordlessly, I made my way over to the bathroom and got myself ready for the day. It's the first time since I was brought back into the light that Alessio wasn't here. I tried not to think about him so much, but it was rather hard as he's been surrounding himself with me however he could. I brushed my teeth, and wash my face before changing into a light floral dress from the large walk-in closet. I'm still not rather convinced that I am Alessio's wife, much less who I was when I was with him. Everyone seemed to know me, and it felt odd to be spoken to. All my life, aside from my mother, I was usually ignored. Slipping on my dress, my eyes then caught onto a small tattered, yellowing book sticking out. It looked so out of place and familiar at the same time. Before I could think about it, my hands reached forward as I grabbed the hand from where it had been buried. A copy of Little Women greeted me back. It was more tattered than I remembered when Mother first gave me the book for my birthday when I was ten. But, I guess it's more than positive now that I did end up at Alessio's wife in a series of events. I opened the first page, and sure enough it was an old sketch of my mother with a smile on her face. I couldn't help but smile in return, before I flipped through. I expected to see the small number of sketches I had done while trapped in my room, of tiny sparrows and some of my favorite scenery and flowers. Yet, 
I was surprised when I saw what else was etched upon the pages as I blinked a few times. They were flooded with the lesios that stole my breath away. Small snippets of memories dangled right in front of me, and just as I was reaching for it, Anastasia's voice rang down the hall. Where the hell is Alessio? I got a text this morning to look after Ava, but nothing since then. Immediately, I snapped the book closed and placed it back. I guess Anastasia and Nikolai didn't realize just how loud they were. I held my breath, equally curious as to where he was even though I didn't want to admit it. I wasn't supposed to have any opinions or desires. Last I heard he went with Rose to Ophelia's, Nikolai answered her. I recalled her being the other woman around the house, aside from Anastasia's. She never talked to me, and I often found myself not wanting to converse with her all that much either. I felt my mouth pull downwards for a brief moment before I stopped myself. Who was she to Alessio? What? Why? Anastasia sounded somewhat revolted by the idea, as I felt inside. What are they doing at Ophelia's bar that they couldn't converse about here? You don't have to worry about it, Nikolai murmured. It's something between those two only. Again my insides churned and twisted. Something inside me doesn't settle well with me. Suddenly my brain throbbed painfully as a searing pain hit me on the side. I gasped, and I'm back again with the devil. He's holding me down, but I don't know how or when I was there for. Why are you crying, pigeon? Do you think you made a dent in his world? An Italian? Robert taunts lowly in my ears. You are nothing. He's probably fucking someone else right now. Finding a much sweeter cunt than your used one. When was that? I felt as if I had an out-of-body experience for a moment, and then the feeling of disgust and shame filled me. Suddenly my arms felt the pricking sensation, and I needed it to go away. I needed to wash, no burn it out. It was the only way to wash away the feeling of his touch, the impurity. My heart squeezed tightly at these words. A tear slipped out of my eyes before I could stop myself. It's another flashback, but I didn't recall when it was. The nightmares I had only told me so much of the pain I went through, but never like this. Had Alessio got fed up with me because I couldn't remember? Ava? Anastasia lightly went to knock on my door. Are you ready? I brushed away the wayward tears. I couldn't let her know that I had overheard, in case she blamed herself. I should have known better, much less to think that Alessio would want someone like me. It didn't make any sense for him to be in love with someone like me, much less marry me. He did it out of pity, didn't he? Placing the book back in place, I went to open the front door. If Anastasia did notice something was wrong, she didn't say anything regarding it. Nikolai was there as well, though he doesn't look as hostile anymore towards me. I bet you like the attention, don't you you little whore? Again, the devil was in my head as he whispered sinister things to me. But he's wrong as I didn't want the attention. I didn't want anything more than for them to leave me alone since I woke back up. The thought of feeling numb felt more than heavily right now as I gently placed a hand over my heart. Is something wrong with her? Nikolai questioned, but he didn't take a step closer to me. A pathetic, useless dirty whore that needed discipline. The girl who can't do anything besides sit still to please men. Would you like to go outside to the greenhouse today? Or maybe just in the library? Anastasia asked timidly, her brows knit together in concern. I don't know what the correct answer was. It always felt like it was a test. I shook my head in response. Robert was gone now, but for how long before he would come back? I still think I'm sometimes dreaming. Again, I wanted to shower and rub away the impurity. But unfortunately, I didn't know how to convey it, other than pointing my fingers to where the bathroom was hesitantly and then my hair. Oh, you want to shower? she asked curiously. I gave a slight meek nod. I'm already itching for it a way to erase the bad memories. Should I help you bathe? I don't mind, Anastasia suggested as she took a step towards me. Actually, the first time you came, I helped you out. I shook my head. 
I wanted to be alone and composed of my thoughts. Instead, my heart felt as if it was getting tugged in all sorts of directions. My body is prickling again, like the first time I woke back up. Except this time, I had no one to take it away and make me feel safe. I was alone once more. Okay, if you need anything let me know. Just click this little buzzer, and I'll get a notification. Twice if you're ready, and I can come to get you for breakfast. Okay? Anastasia reminded me. Right, the buzzer they equipped me over my head was my form of communication. Though they never let me out of their sight, they were scared if anything were to happen to me. I made my way to the bathroom. Once the door was locked, I quickly scrambled to turn on the shower head to the hottest possible temperature. Naked, my eyes landed onto the rigid dark scars on my wrists and then my family's branding on my ribcage. Other scars were still in the midst of healing. I need to wash away his touch now. Instead of crying out of the boiling water striking my flesh, I embraced it. It was the only way for me to wash away the dirtiness, his touch. No matter how hot the water was as it ran down my body, I felt like it wasn't going away. I continued to scrub with all my might, the water scalding my body consistently. Finally, when I felt like that wasn't enough, I resorted to using my own fingers, hoping that the dirtiness I was feeling would disappear. The devil's grasp was on me again, trying to drag me back into the dark with his hands on my neck. I hated it, but welcomed it, as it was better than the thought of Alessio with someone else, as darkness enveloped me. 9. Alessio. If you have word about the whereabouts of Robert, you let me know. I watched Rose roll her eyes at my demands as she flicked off my comment. After a grueling two hours after I got word she captured one of Robert's men, it took everything in me to leave Ava. Since she had returned, I never did leave her out of my sight in case of anything. Though I trusted Anastasia and everyone to keep her safe and well, she was antsy of everyone that wasn't me. It's slow and steady progress. She didn't flinch when it came to me anymore. Just thinking about Ava made me anxious to head back. I'm sure she's already awake. I told Anastasia to keep her distracted until I got back by taking a walk to the greenhouse or even spending time in the library. I've coaxed her into playing chess but she refused outright. Yeah, I got it after the fifth time you reminded me, she informed me with a scowl. I didn't blame her for being in such a bad mood. She had been working tirelessly to find that son of a bitch. Though Rose gave the impression she could care less about Ava, I knew she respected her as my queen. She's the only one who knew people and sneaked into high-end clubs too. I still can't believe it took manipulating his limp dick to spill what we needed. You'd think that he'll be thanking me. Your method of getting others to speak is rather interesting, I snickered. Her method alone is why I believe most men would naturally fear her, as she shrugged. She's still covered in blood, almost proud as it stained most of her dark clothing. Yet she's germophobic when it comes to other things like animals and dust. Well that was the only way he spilled. So I guess my next destination is getting away into Ricker's club, she informed me, tossing her spiral knife up in the air and then catching it with ease. I heard he runs a prostitution ring, I pointed out. Be careful. Is that concern I hear for once? Rose pointed out, the edge of her lips pulling upwards as she tilted her head to the side. But of course, I already knew what she was about to say, as she chuckled in amusement. Man, you really are growing a pussy since she came into your life, huh? Fuck off, I threw before taking my phone out. Anastasia had texted me that Ava was finally up, which was progress. She often didn't like to leave my side, at least that's what I understand. However, she chose to stay inside, no matter how much I tried to hoax if she'd like to visit the greenhouse or take a stroll. My wife had become scared of the outside world. At times she didn't even want to leave, completely curled up on the bed while facing the window that I've always kept open for her. She would stare out in a daze whenever I was there, and often I was terrified she would jump and leave me in this cruel world. She couldn't. Ava was the equivalent of my heart. 
Her wings were cruelly clipped so that she refused even to see more than what she had become used to in those months. I vowed that when I had Robert, I would give him the most brutal death imaginable. Getting into the car, I pinched the bridge of my nose as Silas turned his attention to me as he pulled into the highway. He's been just on edge as I was in hopes of hunting that fucker down, but he always seemed to be one step ahead of me. He was purposely leading us on a wild goose chase for his amusement. Nothing. Nothing, I affirmed, balling my hands into a fist. The urge to destroy everything rang loud and clear, beating at the back of my head. Biting my tongue until the metallic taste of my blood filled my mouth, I glanced down at my watch. Fuck, I didn't expect for me to take this long at Ophelia's. Relax, Anastasia has her if anything, Silas replied, though he didn't say anything when I told him to pick up the speed. I didn't want her to wake up without me there. In the last few weeks, I felt as if we'd made progress, albeit it could all be in the back of my head. At the very least, she had started to acknowledge me, and I was able to touch her. The flinching was completely gone if I gave her enough time to come to terms with it. I dared believe that she found my touch comforting. Except, the nightmares weren't getting any better. One time, I had left to get a glass of water, so she had something to drink in the morning only to find her thrashing and crying out. Each time she cried, it made my heart give out a bit more. Yet to see that she started clawing her arms and neck until her nails were covered in red. I had to pry her hands away, holding her close as I begged for her to wake up. I didn't know how long before she finally settled, and I promised never to leave her alone again. On the small occasion that I had left her, I would always return before she had awakened because of that incident. I wanted her to know that I was there, being the first thing she saw when she awoke, and the last thing she saw before drifting. The constant she needed. Entering the front door, I started loosening my tie. I had hoped to see if Anastasia had somehow coaxed her to come out, but she had yet to acknowledge anyone else for the most part, aside from me. The estate was too quiet without her. I've come to realize just how much life she had brought to others, and now that it was robbed, it only reminded me that I needed her back. When I got up, I was instantly met with Anastasia's pacing, causing me to frown. Where's Ava? Finally, she threw her hands up. Instantly, I was panicking when I saw that she wasn't with her, asking where she was once more. She's showering but I'm a bit concerned, which is why I was just calling you. Why? What's wrong? I questioned on high alert. She's been there for too long and there's steam pouring out. I was just about to check on her as she's been asking to shower since she had awoken, and you weren't there," Anastasia warily stated before knocking on the door. There was no sound, and it felt like the world went still momentarily as she knocked again, firmer this time. Ava? Are you okay? Stand back, I demanded. I didn't even hesitate to kick down the door in one swift movement. The door snapped off the hinge without much of a fight and big puffs of steam came swarming out towards me. For a moment, I couldn't see past the excess amount of steam as I stepped in. Instantly, I was already sweating by how hot the room had become as my heartbeat sped faster. My forehead became drenched in sweat. It's then I heard her, my little Ava whimpering and sniffling. Nikolai, get Dr. Benzo. I'm going to tell Silas and Alexei, Anastasia instructed, but it felt like her voice was miles away. Everything seemed to blur, the ringing in my ears seemed to get louder as I rushed towards Ava. No no no, I muttered. I could hear her whimper of pain as I approached the shower. I watched in scalding hot water that fell onto her reddened back, as her limp body lay just over the edge of the white tub. Immediately, my hand shot out to withdraw her body from the tub and pull her frail body away from the boiling hot water. I'm gritting my teeth as the blistering water hits my skin but I could care less. My concern was only focused on Ava right now. Fuck Ava. Why? I gritted out. I pulled her body out of the tub, cradling close to my chest as I looked down at her body. Her whole body was red and blistering from what I noticed. I parted her hair back, ensuring that she was breathing, even if it was ragged and uneven. Her lips were parted, barely able to breathe properly. 
Picking her up, I made my way back into our bedroom. I laid her limp body onto her front as I took in the extent of the damage on her back, which was the worse. It chalked me up seeing that her back was beyond red and starting to peel from being bathed excessively in the hot tub. A growl ruptured in my throat when I heard Alexei. Shit, is she okay? What happened? Silas demanded. Get the fuck out unless you want to get shot, I gritted out, and they immediately knew what I meant. Unless it was the doctor or Anastasia, no one was allowed to look at my wife's body. I didn't care. Everyone stepped aside, looking downward as I quickly met with Anastasia as Dr. Benzo came running to meet me halfway. It didn't make me feel better when Dr. Benzo's face paled at the sight of her before leading me to the infirmary room. That was the last thing I wanted to be once more, after she was deemed well enough to leave to be in my bed. With each step I took, I hated that she was whimpering, barely conscious. I knew how much pain she was in, and I made sure not to grip her too tightly in irritating her already reddened skin. Finally, getting into the infirmary, Dr. Benzo turned to me. Lay her on her front so I can assess what we're dealing with. Gently, I lay her down on the bed. Although it kills me, I knew that I had to leave to allow him to have the utmost concentration. Nikolai and Silas had to drag me away from her the first few times. Now I had to do it for her sake, despite me leaving her was what got here there in the first place. If she wakes up. I will call for you, he interjected with a nod. I know. Tagging a ragged breath, I slowly went to close the door behind me. No one spoke a word when I stepped out, tension looming over the air when I finally spoke. She needs to be on watch at all times should I not be here going forth. Everything in the house that's dangerous needs to be locked. The windows need to be bolted in the meantime to prevent anything else. To prevent her from going through her plan. Everyone seemed to be on board with my instructions, seeing firsthand that Ava would harm herself when left alone. I had held on to the hope that she was slowly healing again. Yet it seemed that it seemed to be getting worse with each passing day. The nightmares. The silence. The raging storm inside of me. What if she never remembers? Extreme rage and frustration coursed through my entire being, and finally, I was at my breaking point. I knew that it wasn't Anastasia's fault, but I blamed myself. I blamed myself for how I treated her until she was taken from me, and everything proceeding to her getting hurt once more. Balling my hands into a fist, I slammed it hard onto the wall for God knows how long. No one said a word to me, yet I knew there wasn't pity in their eyes. Rather as their pecan that had everything robbed from him. Not only had I almost lost my wife. They had lost their queen. It didn't make me feel any better by the time I finished. I wanted to shoot someone, painting their blood everywhere like a canvas in Ava's place. The growing need to find Robert spiked more than ever before as I took a ragged breath, my fist throbbing and probably bleeding. An hour passed before Dr. Benzo finally opened the door, looking at us. She's okay, he started with, and everyone released a breath they didn't know they were holding much like myself. She suffered from second-degree burns, but luckily, you got her out in time before she could scar. Unfortunately, most of her skin had blistered or peeled just a bit. In the meantime, I suggest that she should not lay on her back where it was the worse alongside her arms. I've wrapped her up and applied ointment. She should be waking up soon enough. Thank you Dr. Benzo, Anastasia said, sighing in relief. May I ask what happened? He questioned, looking around the room when Anastasia went to recount everything once more. It only confirmed what I had suspected this entire time, that something had prompted her to act out. I would highly suggest getting a therapist on the estate, Dr. Benzo finally settled with. In the meantime, I would allow her to recuperate for a bit first. I'll be sure to come by in a few hours to remove the wraps and check once more. That'll be great, Silas replied. Soon after Dr. Benzo left, he turned to us. The air is still foul at this new turn of events. I'll be going to spar for a while before getting back to work. Does anyone want in to spot me? Me, Nikolai grunted out as everyone was more than confident I wouldn't leave Ava now. 
I needed to be with her, planning on what my next move would be going forth while keeping her safe. I'm more than thankful my father had taken over in the meantime and worked well with Silas, but I couldn't keep this up forever. Not until I knew Robert was taken out that I would be able to breathe finally. I'll prepare something for Ava when she awakens, Anastasia piped in, before she eyed her brother, who had made no indication that he wanted to leave. Finally, Anastasia elbowed him as everyone watched. Alexei, I'm actually hoping to talk to Alessio privately for a bit, he confessed, his eyes finding mine. Everyone leave, I demanded. As they slowly made their way to where they needed to be, I was more than thankful that they were willing to give me the space to be with my wife. What did you want to talk about? So, what are you going to do about your little bird now that this happened? Alexei questioned, except the real question was in spoken between us. He took a stand next to M, his eyes adverting to Ava's sleeping form for a moment before away, almost in pain. He still had feelings for my wife. Make her remember, I murmured, leaning back as I pinched the bridge of my nose. Bring her back. The agenda didn't change by any means, but she will be monitored more closely, should I ever choose to leave her side, which isn't happening given what happened just this morning. Where were you? Rose had a lead and captured one of Robert's men. I wasn't going to take a risk bringing him back at the estate, so we went to Ophelia's, I informed him. It was supposed to be quick and easy, but he didn't know anything. So Rose is my next best hope right now, while I try getting Ava to remember everything. There's a pause as he shoved his hands into his pockets. What's the chances of her remembering? Slim, I replied. Dr. Benzo had told us that amnesia and coping methods with trauma come in a broad spectrum of variety. There's a chance that she may never remember, but I wasn't going to stop from trying. I'll make her trust me again and keep her nightmares at bay. I'm never going to stop though. You do realize if she remembers, she'll remember the good and the bad, right? The time when she was taken and what happened before she was taken too, he reminded me. I've known for a fact, but it didn't mean I wouldn't do whatever is necessary to make her forgive me. I'll prove to her that I didn't mean any of it, I confessed. I'll beg. That seemed to cause him to chuckle. You? Begging? Shut the fuck up, I responded. But when it comes to Ava, I would do nearly anything she wanted except to leave. She was it for me, and I would do anything to regain her trust again when the time came. I loved her despite how much I had fucked up. Anastasia told me what happened, he informed me. Told everyone when you went to see Dr. Benzo. It was my fault, I told him, my shoulders sagging. What? I left her to pursuit in what I thought was a lead with Rose, I confessed. It was the only explanation as to why she may have spiraled. She must have had something remind her of a bad memory and physically took it out on herself not to feel emotionally. I was her constant, and I took it away from her. That's bullshit, he threw back at me, his brows bumped together. You didn't know that would happen. You and everyone else didn't know she was going to do this. Do you blame my sister? No of course not, I snapped back. Then you don't have the right to blame yourself either, he replied getting back onto his feet as he pulled himself off the wall he's been leaning on. Ava wouldn't have wanted you to beat yourself over it, or anyone else. You have to be strong for her, but you have us to rely on us as well, Alessio. So get your head out of your ass and rely on your family, yeah? He didn't wait for me to reply before he turned to leave. I knew he was speaking from his heart as a family member, which didn't make me feel any better. Raking my hair back, I decided that it was time to see my wife before trying to understand what Alexei's words meant. I've always felt as if I wasn't living, completely alone without having anything to lose until Ava came around. She had made me feel again and understand just how I'm capable of love. Turning the doorknob, my heart started beating wildly to see that she was awake. She didn't turn to me, but I made my presence known with my voice calling to her hoping she would turn and give me those pretty ocean blue eyes. Quietly, I slipped into bed with her, my body finally feeling as if it could relax again with her in my arms. 
I knew I couldn't touch her until her blisters and burn went away, but my body always craved to be close to her however possible. She stared at me with half-lidded eyes, almost as if she couldn't believe that I was there. Hi there precious. You gave me and everyone else a fright before, I crooned lightly, holding her tightly on the small section of her waist where the burning wasn't as severe to stop her from turning onto her back as ointment had just been applied. Never do that again. Do you understand me? She didn't know that this time, things would be different. I wasn't going to let her out of my sight, no matter what. I left her to meet with Rose, as I assumed there was a lead where Robert had been my biggest mistake. Once more, as our eyes met, there's nothing but dull emptiness like when I had brought her back. It almost ripped the remainder of my heart straight out of my chest. I had thought for sure she wouldn't talk to me, or acknowledge me. You left Alessio, she croaked so softly that I almost missed it. Instantly, I tried to hold my excitement, primarily upon seeing that she had finally not only acknowledged me, but she had spoken my name. She knew who I was. Her eyes were barely open, and I knew she wasn't fully awake at this point. You left me. My wife was feeling again, but not how I wanted her to. I went to cup her face gently, hating for how dejected and heartbreaking her voice was as she wavered. She had thought I had left her when that was the case at all. Ava, I would never leave you, you're everything to me. You're my wife, my other half. I love you precious. You left me, she repeated as I used the pad of my thumb to stroke her cheek. For her. Rose. I shook my head, gently cupping her cheeks. Her eyes slowly opened a bit wider as her eyes pierced mine. I needed her to understand that I would never love another person. She was it for me in this lifetime and the next. No Eva, you have my heart and soul. That seemed to take away the tension in her body. Was she remembering? Slowly, I moved closer, bringing her body up against mine to the best of my abilities without touching her burns as I continued to run my thumb on her face. I went running my fingers through her hair afterward, messaging her scalp that she hadn't tried scalding her head in. The way she sighed almost contently, her body seemed to finally be done fighting whatever she had gone through in the short span that I was gone. I had become her constant and then took it away, but it still didn't answer my question. What had triggered it? Ava? Hum, she murmured drowsily. Why did you do that today? I asked hoping it wouldn't send her spiraling again. I felt dirty, she replied lowly, shame filling her voice. Robert's touch made me want to wash it away. Burn it. Precious, I choked out. I couldn't fathom thinking what would have happened if I hadn't shown up in time. Her skin was already peeling, and just like her nightmares, she only knew how to hurt herself just to not to feel emotionally. But you, your touch doesn't hurt, she settles with. It soothes me. I don't know why. Her doe eyes were on me momentarily, and then they closed. I wanted to beg for her to wake back up, because I wouldn't know the next time I would hear her beautiful voice again. But I didn't know how long I laid next to her before I followed suit, kissing her once more on the forehead. It was progress. 10. Ava. Now Ava, how are you feeling today on the mood meter? Can you point to where you're at? I bit my tongue as I nervously glanced up at Katrina. The woman was nice, but I didn't like how well she's able to read me as a therapist. I didn't want to talk about what I refused to recall. I most certainly didn't want to talk about my feelings since I've awoken, or what happened one and a half weeks ago either in the shower. I stared down at my wrists that were fiddling with the hem of my dress. The ugly rigid markings were staring back at me. It was filled with nothing but hatred and a branding much like the one on my ribcage. Though I couldn't remember much regarding how I had gotten the scars on my wrists, I certainly remembered the one on the inner parts of my wrists all too well. Slowly I turned my hand over and I'm greeted with a long line that was much darker than the scaring from where Robert had tied and drugged me up. The day I had tried killing myself shortly after. Why did it feel as if there was something missing there, in my wrist? Timidly, my fingers slid across the plastic board, 
till it settles on the upper left corner right between nervous and restless. It's been like this for days since my burns were well enough to move around, and I finally cave in finally answer her. I watch as Katrina smiles, seeming happy that I'm making progress. For the remainder of an hour, she gave me some breathing exercises to do and some questions for me to reflect on in the journal she had given to me. I like that she didn't try prying me to show her what I've written, as I've done nothing more than sketching on them of what caught my attention for the day rather than anything else. I'm proud of you, Ava. At that, I snapped my attention upwards to meet Katrina's hazelnut eyes. I wasn't entirely sure as to why, since I didn't even converse with her after pointing out where I'm feeling. Almost as if she read my mind, she continued. I can see that you're trying through your struggles and wanting to converse with me. It must be very hard, but you're pushing through it. Without struggle, there's no progress. Something about that statement resided with me as I gave a meek nod. I suppose that was true. Except, I didn't even know where I was headed in terms of my progress. Everyone is expecting me to remember, but I've yet to decide for myself if I wanted to. The thought of being numb felt much more pleasant than anything else. Well, that's enough for the day then, she nodded. Please be sure to continue journaling regarding your thoughts and take your medicine accordingly, she sternly told me. It reminded me much of my mother that I nodded. It's not as if I could forget with Alessio always keeping everything on the dot with my medication and changing my wraps before applying ointment. Shutting the door, I slowly made my way past the office where Anastasia or her brother Alexei would often be waiting for me to take me to dinner. It's a one-way hall, and I had presumed that after that incident almost two weeks ago, they had locked every single room to ensure I wouldn't try anything. Passing by Alessio's office, the feeling of restlessness and something else settles over me once more when my eyes wandered in for a moment. It bubbles inside of my stomach, threatening to lash out that Alessio was with Rose again. They were in the midst of a deep conversation when Rose sits on his desk, throwing her knife up in the air and catching the handle with ease. I still didn't understand their relationship, but the unpleasant feelings would always stir inside of my chest. Then I watch as she smiled almost wickedly at whatever she had said, crossing her legs as her eyes are completely focused on Alessio. She reached over, almost like she was grabbing for his tie. Before I knew it, I have stopped walking and standing right in front of his office. Almost as if he could sense me, Alessio's eyes pierced mine. Ava, what are you doing here? he questioned surprised before it morphed to a smile in seeing that I had come to find him first rather than the other way around. I shrugged, not really sure myself why I had decided to come here either, yet I felt as if I could breathe again when I see the distance between the two when Rose got up while rolling her eyes. Good. Come in, precious, he encouraged as I slowly did as I was told, especially seeing his smile widen even further. His eyes took complete hold of me, hypnotizing me completely as I rounded his desk. How was your session with Katrina? Did you need something? I don't know. I didn't need anything, but I didn't like seeing Rose so close to Alessio either. Swallowing the lump in my throat, I refused to talk to him. However, he never stopped to coax me into trying. This man that was my husband made me feel quite strange at times, invoking emotions I didn't like as he stared at me. Come here, he murmured, holding his hand out and extending to me. Usually, I would only hold his hand on the rare occasion before he pulled me into his lap, cradling me into his chest. For a reason I couldn't explain, my body moved accordingly in front of Rose. I freely went to settle into his lap, coddling close to his warm chest. I still tensed under his touch, but it wasn't bad anymore. His touch didn't burn me. It didn't make me feel sick. Something about it was soothing, especially when he held me. I wanted to tell him, but that would show a sign of weakness. The monster I was with fed off on it. I nuzzled into his chest, and the smell of cedar wood and vanilla filled my lungs as I sighed in contentment. Good girl. My body went completely still for a moment at the appraisal. Something about those two words set a blazing infernal inside of my heart as my eyes snapped up for a moment. 
My face started to heat up, traveling down to my shoulders. Why? Are you remembering, my little stubborn wife? Are you finally starting to wake up from your sleep? He questioned, his eyes never leaving mine. Lately, there have been little snippets that would flash when I least expected it. Sometimes it would be of Anastasia or the others around the estate, making me a bit at ease with the memories I had associated with them. A majority would be filled with memories of Alessio around the estate. However, I could never fully grasp the fullness of my lost memories. I've tried, but it almost seemed as if my mind refused to reach for it, struggling with my very soul that wanted just that. When I look at the greenhouse or the chessboard, my head would throb almost painfully. Should I leave before I puke, and we'll continue this later? Rose snapped, jolting me. Rose, he snapped almost in warning before he settled his hand onto my back. I don't understand Rose's hatred towards me, but I didn't mind in the slightest. It seemed to be the only thing that made sense around her, for a Russian to not like an Italian. Do you want her to leave, Ava? Yes. I didn't say anything, choosing not to have a voice in the matter. I didn't hate Rose, as she had done nothing wrong to me. We'll wrap this up later, get in settled with. All right. I got a hold of the... She trailed off for a moment, and I thought for a moment she was being careful around me, which didn't make any sense. I knew she didn't like me, since the moment I'd awakened before she continued. The ring that Ricker's running. There's a new shipment somewhere next week. I'll try to see what I can do in terms of finding out and putting an end to it as well. Thank you, he said before the door closed. I should have felt guilty to have disturbed his meeting, but it was the opposite. It wasn't like me to do such things. When the devil was away or too busy to pay attention to me, I often felt happy and relieved. With Alessio, it's the exact opposite. Instantly I relaxed as a small sigh escaped my lips. Mine. My little brat, he chuckled softly, brushing my hair back so that our eyes stayed locked. He almost seemed happy rather than amused by my action. You don't like me with Rose. Were you trying to stake your claim on me because you were jealous? My eyes widened for a moment, surprised that he was able to read my mind so easily. I felt as if I felt this way before, back before I had my memories robbed from me. He kissed my temples before shuffling me on my feet. How was your talk with Katrina? He questioned taking my hand into his. He knew that I wouldn't answer, but I enjoyed that he asked anyway. I wasn't entirely sure if Katrina tells him what happens during our sessions, but it's not as if there was much anyway. We're having spaghetti tonight. Are you hungry already? Timidly, I nodded, and my heart flipped to see how happy I had made him. Dinner was lively as usual, something I still wasn't quite used to. Even at my father's estate, dinner was placed in front of my door by the maids. Yet here they often would try conversing and joking almost as if we were a family, which only baffled me further. How could they treat their enemy like family? Despite being Alessio's wife, I was still the outlander. There's a warm feeling that settled over me whenever they laugh, including me in their conversation. It's a feeling that felt a very long time ago with my mother, and then with the boy and his mother I first fell in love with when I had dared to run off. What I've noticed as well was that they wouldn't try looking at me, especially when I were to eat slowly compared to the rest of them. I didn't feel comfortable needing to be alone before my body would accept food as I've grown used to doing so for years. They didn't mind, finishing and parting after placing their dishes into the sink before calling it a night, until there was only me and Alessio. Finish at least half of your plate, precious, he instructed me with a frown when he realized that I wasn't trying to eat more. The pasta was delicious, but I didn't feel hungry anymore. His eyes pierced mine, his brows knitting together as concern filled his features. Please? Then, we can go to the library. Not liking the look on his face as he made my heart dully ache, I managed to take a few more bites as he looked away to give me some privacy. His phone buzzed once more on the table as he rapidly typed back with what appeared to be a scowl on his face. It must be hard given being the Russian pecan. After getting through with half, 
he placed a plastic wrap over my food in case I get hungry later, before leading me to the library. As usual, the smell of books always made me feel safe. It's a small haven, aside from the greenhouse as we settled in our usual spot I loved so much. Except for this time, the chessboard that had been sitting on the side of the table seemed to call to me. My hands twitched, but I refused to give in to the calling. I don't play. I haven't played in years, but something told me otherwise. Picking up on where I had left off in Little Women, I decided to bury myself into my favorite book once more. My journal is next to me, pencil laid out as I would often find the urge to sketch. I was thankful Alessio didn't try looking through it, as it had always been in the same position as I had left it. He cared about my privacy. Glancing over, I see that he was busy at work on his laptop once more. The silence never felt tense or awkward either, as I got lost in my novel once more. I didn't know how long had passed before my eyes slowly started getting droopy. Unconsciously, I rolled onto my stomach, bury myself into the blanket. Before I can understand what was happening, Alessio swooped me right up on my feet and my eyes widened. My mouth parted for a bit. My husband always seemed to love touching me more than anything else. While the thought of touch is enough to send me spiraling into an endless panic and prickling on my skin, he doesn't. When it comes to Alessio, it's almost as if my body remembered something my brain and heart didn't. He's the only person that could touch me that I felt safe and warm all over. Perhaps it was because I was getting more used to his presence. When I awakened from one of my endless nightmares, he was the one comforting me when I felt as if I was going to die. As I stared up at him while he cradled me to his chest and out of the library where we've been, my eyes unconsciously narrowed as a small huff made its way out of my mouth. Despite how comforting it felt, it was not as if I needed to be carried, I could walk just fine. What's wrong with carrying my wife? Once more, my brain jostled because I remember he had said it before. I had fallen and scratched my knees after gardening when I saw Alessio in his studies talking with Rose. It was then he came to get me, taking me to see Dr. Benzo while saying those exact words. I tried grabbing for the thin, flimsy little string in front of me in hopes of recalling more, but it quickly slipped from my memories once more. I couldn't help but feel frustrated for a moment, another new feeling to me as I stared at Alessio. Do you remember something precious? He questioned, almost as if he couldn't believe it either. It was the second time today which was a first. Sometimes I wanted to answer him, but I didn't like talking. I didn't want to put forth what my opinion are, as that would lead to opening up and feeling. So instead I only closed my eyes, trusting him to keep me safe like every night as my eyes grew heavier. Are you ready for bed then? Again I only mustered a small shrug in response. A chuckle rumbled through his chest and I sighed. I felt his lips brush my temples. I could hear the door of his bedroom opening as he carried me back to the golden cage I've come to love more than the outside world. It's safer, and there's no danger either with him next to me. I should be comfortable, but I was. Are you comfortable? He questioned, though it sounded like his voice was miles away as I started to drift. So much happened today. According to Katrina, too many stimuli might be what I needed to remember, but more than anything else, I just felt exhausted. I grabbed a small fistful of his shirt instead trying to get even closer to him. Slowly, he settled me onto the bed before going to turn off the lights. There's a bit of shuffling, and I know that he was changing to sleep in his t-shirt and shorts. The mattress dipped, and I surprised myself when I turned over, burying my face into his chest. It's the only way I'm able to fall asleep. There's no point in denying it that he kept my nightmares at bay and kept me from attacking myself. Just as I started drifting, he laid a kiss onto my forehead lightly. Good night, my little Gian bird. Pain. There was only pain when I had come to realize. Every night, I was trapped in my body once more, back to the basement once more with the devil. Everything ached, and the smell of feces and other foul odors is enough to make me hurl once more as tears streamed down my face in rapid session. Help. Someone. Anyone. Ah. 
Why are you crying, Ava? Shouldn't you be happy? Robert cooed into my hair, yanking so hard onto the chain that it dug into my already swollen throat. Tears filled my vision, blurring as I struggled to breathe. Why couldn't I die already? Where is he? Where's Alessio? The thought of his name still brought comfort, despite what he had said to me before I was taken. Come on, smile for me. Smile, pigeon. You should be elastic that you can't have kids now. You know how much I hate kids, and I'm sure if you did get pregnant, I would have aborted it anyways. Noisy, pesky, disgusting little shits. But now I can continue to use your body coming in you, and it'll be fine, he laughed darkly. But you know what's a damn shame? I was hoping I can knock you up, send a picture to Alessio just for kicks. You still remember who he is? I whimpered in reply. My core burned and I begged to finally be numb. I begged to be unconscious because then, I didn't have to feel anything. Every inch of my body felt like it was withering away, much like my very soul. Do you? Who is he to you again? Answer me, pigeon. He's my husband, I whispered before I could stop myself. Wrong fucking answer. Speaking your legs for an enemy like a seasoned whore. But it doesn't matter. Sooner or later, you'll forget. Sooner or later, you'll only think of him as the man who abandoned you. Then he took the knife out of me before. Ava, Ava, wake up. Please, precious. I was gasping for air, but it was constricted. I felt the bile rise in my stomach. In an instant I was on my feet, racing to the bathroom before hunching over, throwing up everything I've eaten for dinner. My head throbbed, my heart racing erratically. My head was throbbing painfully, and I recalled why I didn't want to remember, why I needed to suppress every memory as it lead to nothing but pain. I can't have kids. How could I have forgotten? The devil had made sure of it mutilating my body, so that it would never be possible again in a short period of time. The memories assaulted my vision, causing me to dry heave as I continued to gag, but nothing came out as I rubbed my chest. I felt a hand on my back and I yelped, too lost in my own mind. Sorry, Alessio said, his voice was weak and tormented. I stared at the man who had now slowly pushed my hair back, while his other hand went to soothingly rub my back. He was my husband, according to Robert. I had been told that since I had awoken, and I had brief memories flickering that confirmed it, but I didn't believe it. Not until Robert said it, solidifying it as the devil wouldn't lie to me with that. He hated all men who looked at me after all. However, I still don't remember Alessio, how I came to meet him. I draw to a complete black as to why Robert had taken me back. My chest and head throbbed at the thought. Did my husband throw me away? The very same man that had that look in his eyes and light up whenever I was near him. I don't understand why he would want me back then. Can I hold you, Ava? Please, he said, snapping my eyes to his. I hate seeing you cry. I weakly nodded before I could think it fully through. Just as how he hated seeing me crying, I hated seeing that look on his face. It made my chest constrict like I couldn't breathe. He crashed me into his chest, rubbing my back and then to my scalp as I closed my eyes. One of my hands went to grip onto his shirt, while my other hand went to my belly, concentrating on just breathing properly. Those nightmares were still fresh on my mind, and it was different from the others, almost like it was recent. Did Alessio want children? I couldn't remember, but I knew how important an heir is. He was already tainting his bloodline by marrying an Italian so perhaps he didn't want children. However, there's something about that proclamation that didn't feel right either. It took a while before my eyes felt heavy again. Alessio couldn't sleep the whole night either, continuing to rub my back or on my arms, making sure that I was okay as he spoke to me in Russian. Sometimes in English, but I would never respond. When the light started to come in, my body finally started to succumb to sleep, as I nuzzled deeper into his chest. Yet, I could barely sleep with the question that's been plaguing my mind since I had awoken. If he wanted children, then that would mean he wouldn't want me. He wouldn't want damaged goods.
Eleven. Alessio. Holy fucking shit. You got that right, I murmured, still in disbelief since this morning. I watched as Silas squinted his eyes as he got on the same level as the tiny creature in my arms that had wandered right back in front of the greenhouse, nibbling on the grass. Hell, even I thought I was hallucinating. Is that really? He trailed off and cocked his head to the side. Shit, what's its name again? Scrabble. Well, I'm more than positive it was with how he seemed to know his name, his long floppy ears and brown body perking up. The major giveaway had been his right hind leg. Despite his healing, he still had a slight limp in his step and didn't try running when I went to pick him up. Instead, he went utterly relaxed as if he was done with the outside world after being spoiled rotten by his owner. How the fuck is that motherfucker not dead? Silas pondered in utter shock before his lips were pulled into a thin line. He tilted his head to the side with a grin. How about we amputate one of its legs for good luck? I call his left foot that wasn't fucked up. Keep that up and I'll amputate your fucking dick, I growled in retaliation as I made my way back indoors. Immediately, Scrabble started to look around, scrambling out my arm like the stubborn little shit he was. Would I bring you good luck next to your Bentley key fob? He grinned before I elbowed him hard. He grunted as satisfaction rolled through me when I stepped into the living room. I guess the saying is true, if you love something let it go. If it comes back it's yours huh? I knew what Silas meant, but he had another thing coming if he thought I'd let Ava go. I had once and I went through hell to bring her back. My wife was perched up in the love seat right before I had gone out for a phone call with Rose. That was when the little rabbit spotted me, acting all innocent while eating grass and beckoning me to come check out if I was actually losing my fucking mind. Precious, look who's here. At that, I lifted Scrabble up and cradled him to my chest. Ava lifted her head from the book she was reading. Something regarding my action of cradling Scrabble made her flinch harshly as she lowered her head once more. Her lips quivered, and I wanted to ask what was wrong despite knowing I wouldn't get a response. I couldn't help but notice she had been on the same page the last hour, completely lost in her thoughts. I had to press my lips thinly together at how tired she had been looking lately. Since her nightmares began a few days ago. I had assumed speaking to her therapist after what happened in the shower would have helped. Yet every time we took one step forward, it felt like we were taking three steps back because I didn't know what was going on in that beautiful mess of her head. It didn't make it any better. Her decline in health was in part with her refusing to sleep. The first day was terrible, by the fourth, I was ready to lace her damn meal with sleeping pills if she didn't sleep soon. When she stayed up I did the same whispering sweet words to her in my native tongue while thinking of all the ways I'll kill Robert. All I knew was that once I had that fucker, I would bring his damn head for my queen. My everything. Do you remember his name? I couldn't help but ask, holding my breath. She shook her head, not to my surprise. His name is Scrabble. He was your pet rabbit, I replied, bringing him closer. The fucker started to thrash around, almost eager to be with her upon catching sight of her. Do you want to hold him, Ava? She nodded as I set the rabbit down on her lap. Immediately Scramble settled into her lap, lifting his head as his nose twitched. Ava looked rather confused before finally placing a hand gingerly on top of his head. He extended his body, lying on her lap across as if he had every right in the world. Staring at her, I didn't know what I was expecting. Perhaps a shimmer of happiness rather than the immense sadness pooling as she cradled him in her arms. Scrabble was now on his back, his feet kicked up in the air as she gently rocked him as if he was some sort of child, completely lost in her own world. Her eyes were void of every emotion, a depth of an abyss. Slowly, I took a seat across from her just as Anastasia and Alexei entered the room. I could hear Anastasia gasp setting the tray filled with cookies and tea down before rushing over at a precautionary pace from spooking Ava. Is that she trailed off her mouth parting in shock? It is, Silas confused, pulling out his phone to check in with Nikolai and Rose. They've been working extensively with my men in hunting down Robert. We didn't care how much blood we bathed in 
or the amount of money, either for the sake of Ava. I guess a miracle does happen, huh? Alexei chuckled, trying to lift the mood, but it only dampened mine. It was a miracle, but not the one I had been hoping for. I knew I shouldn't be holding on to hope like this, but I had hoped to see Scrabble would do something. Spark some sort of memories of when I had started to fall for her. Rather, she looked almost like a wounded animal of sorts. Softly picking her up, I propped her right onto my lap, and she sighed, leaning in. I could see the bags under her eyes only worsening with each passing day, yet she refused to sleep at night either. I would know, having memorized the way she breathed. She would stare out the window, and sometimes I was scared to have fallen asleep, and she managed to fly from my grasp. Holding her, she absentmindedly stroked the top of Scrabble's head, and I hoped she'd be able to sleep tonight at the very least. My phone buzzed as I handed it over to Silas, not wanting to disturb Ava in the hopes she might be falling asleep. Even with my father taking over so I could hunt down the fucker, I still had an empire to run at the end of the day. What do you want to do today? I asked Ava, kissing her temples. She only sighed again, and I wasn't expecting an answer either. Do you want to take a stroll around the greenhouse? Play a game of chess, perhaps? Maybe we could bake together, Anastasia chimed in with a soft smile. I knew how much she was hurting as well with Ava losing her memories, and yet, she still tried to incorporate her into our daily routine before her kidnapping. She's holding on to the hope that maybe it'll jolt her memory by reminding her of a schedule she used to do plenty before. It'll be fun. Yeah, we could never have too many sweets, Alexei agreed. I watched Silas walk towards the kitchen area from the corner of my eyes, but disregarded it. Ah, I meant baking for Alessio, who doesn't like sweets, Anastasia corrected, and he gave me a sheepish smile when I scowled at him. If it weren't for Ava in my lap right now, I really would have contemplated swinging. Alexei parted his mouth but didn't get to say anything when Silas returned, clearing his throat with a pale face. Alessio, you might want to come up for this, he murmured, his eyes falling onto where Ava was for a moment before speaking in our native tongue. Ubliudok Zavonit Isprashiviet Ye. The motherfucker is calling and asking for her. My blood turned cold as I worked to remain in control. Even Anastasia and Alexei tensed at who was on the other line. As I got up, Alexei quickly went to fetch Nikolai to help track him down, settling Ava back down onto the couch. Just what else could go wrong today? I'll be right back precious, I muttered, trying to remain calm so she wouldn't catch on the raging storm inside me, before kissing the top of her head. You look rather tired, do you want to nap before supper? Rather than ignoring me like she often did with my questions, her body quickly goes rigid at the mention of sleep. My eyes narrowed slightly, taking in the sight of her reaction. Looking over, I nodded at Anastasia, who understood what I wanted. Lock her in the bedroom but guard her until I returned. Nodding curtly at Silas, we made our way to my study's room and put my phone on speaker. All the while, Silas goes straight to work alongside Alexei and even Nikolai. For a moment, nothing but silence filled the line, aside from his heavy breathing. The rhythmic sound sickened and angered me to no end, especially because he knew what he was doing by taunting me. However, I needed the call to last longer, as it would make it easier for me to track it. The sooner I could send him straight to the pits of hell. I know you're there fucker, I snarled, finally breaking the tension first. At this point, I'm more than confident he's doing it just to mock me, getting a kick out of us not being able to find him like some sort of sick cat and mouse game. It'll only be a matter of time, though. I didn't ask for you, he drawled out slowly. I asked for my pigeon, my wife. She's my wife, I growled, seeing red as I resisted the urge to break everything inside my office completely. If you get anywhere near her, I will cut your fucking dick off and shove it so far up your ass that you'll feel it in your throat. You're rather possessive for a broken pigeon, he chuckled. I never thought you'll want a broken toy. She must really be something, huh? I can't blame you for having the tightest and the most erotic screams, fuck, even the thought of her is making me hard right now. I want to break the phone. I'm grinding my teeth so hard, 
I could practically feel the tension on my forehead, and I willed myself from doing so. It was the only way to keep myself in check, hoping that I'll be able to bring him back so I could cause a painful and slow death for him. What the hell do you want? I told you I'm looking to speak to my pigeon, I replied in a bored tone, and I'm at my wit's end. You will never. A shame. Tell me, have you discovered that little surprise I have given Ava as a gift? He taunted, and every fiber in my body froze at his question. It was almost as if he knew what had been causing her night terrors lately, and it sickened me to death. The fuck is that supposed to mean? I roared. I see she hasn't told you yet, he sang, and my stomach churned. He was getting a kick out of this, and Silas looked at me, telling me with his fucking eyes not to lose it yet as they worked furiously in tracing the ping. Maybe she doesn't remember, or your little broken toy is lying to you. He's bluffing. He had to be fucking bluffing. I swear to God Robert when I fucking find you, I'll make sure you die a slow death, I roared so loud that I'm sure the estate shook. I couldn't see straight, and to know he was out there mocking my fucking wife sent me into a blind fury. Then come find me. The phone clipped and that was when all hell broke less. I threw the phone, the pieces shattering alongside the framed painting that costed me three million. Luckily, my men knew better than to talk reason when I was like this. I didn't want reasons. I wanted blood, I wanted his head on a silver plate. We're working on it, Silas mumbled, reading my mind. They furiously typed away on their software to find which phone carrier Robert was using, and got a ping of the call. A million questions plagued my mind. Why did he call me? What did he want to say to Ava? What the hell does Robert mean? Does Ava remember something which was why she has been keeping her distance? It would also explain her recent nightmares, and I knew it'd only be a matter of time before sleep deprivation made her reckless again. I couldn't let her fly yet because I wasn't ready to let her go, not now and not ever. I found his location, Alexei declared, shooting up from his seat. It could be a trap, Nikolai rumbled before shaking his head. No, it has to be. Silas looked at me, brows pinched together at the two choices laid before us. We're more than confident of the impending danger of going, and yet, there was a chance I could give Ava his head. We could give our queen the peace she deserves. Revenge. What are your commands, boss? I knew it was a long shot, but it's one I couldn't afford to take. Meet me at the front gates in ten, I instructed and walked out. I needed to see Ava before I went, because she was the only one that could put the anger to rest. She was my other half, the only one that could make me whole. Storming down the long hall, Anastasia only bowed her head, probably hearing my conversation, which only made me grim. What would Ava think? Fuck, what if I scared her? Swallowing the bundle of nerves, I shook the thought away. No, she would never be afraid of me. Opening our bedroom door, I completely froze at the sight in front of me. I had presumed Ava would be sitting on the sofa she's called her own. Yet there she was, pacing around the room, completely lost in her own head to even realize I had entered. My heart dropped to my stomach upon realizing she cradled Scrabble in her arms as if. As if he was a newborn child. He was lying on his back with his eyes looking up at her, completely at ease while twitching his nose. Ava almost looked as if she was in a trance, completely lost in her thoughts while rocking and bouncing the rabbit. I've never seen her like this before and there was something rather nerve-wracking, to say the least. A tremor racked down my back when she started humming to Scrabble, a ghost smile on her face. Ava. Her whole body jumped at the sound of my voice, and my heart stopped for a moment when she dropped Scrabble. Luckily, he was able to land on his legs due to the shortfall onto the bed. Her whole body started shaking when she realized what she had done before she turned to me tears welling at the corners of her eyes as shame and disgust filled her. My heart was breaking to see her crumbling before me, the final straw breaking. I couldn't say anything, watching as she raked her hair back before tugging at the ends of them. She looked on the very edge of completely shattering, and I didn't know if I'd be able to piece her all back together in the way I had wanted to. Without thinking, 
I reached out for her, trying to stop her before she could harm herself further. It's then everything slowed down as she tried running past me, but after what happened last time, there wasn't a chance I trusted her to be alone. Thankfully, I beat her to it. I grabbed her by the waist, hauling her against my body, as she started screaming and wailing. It's almost as if it was the final nail in the coffin. She clawed hard at my skin, drawing blood but she didn't stop. No. My heart ached at how broken she sounded. Ava. Please, let me go Alessio, she cried out, and I found a small disturbing part of me elastic she had spoken and acknowledged who I was. She continued to thrash in my arms but I vowed never to let her go. Not in this fucking life or the next. I hauled her onto the bed until she lightly landed on her stomach. She whimpered, trying to get onto her elbow to escape, but I wouldn't allow her. Never precious, I growled in return. Settle for me, Ava. Tears continued to stream down, and it was like a punch in the gut every time I saw her face as I pinned her wrists up against her arm. She's heaving, barely able to even get proper words out in the way she was heaving. Please please dot you have to. You can't fix me. Watch me, I retaliated. Fuck, this isn't what I wanted. What the hell did Robert do to her? Let me go, she cried, shaking her head as broken sobs escaped from her tiny body. I'm never letting you go, you hear me? I remarked, and she cried harder. I didn't know what was going on in that head of hers, but she and I were forever. We took a fucking vow, and I will honor it. You will sleep, and we will talk about it when you wake up. With that in mind, I got up, placing Scrabble back on the floor so he wouldn't get hurt in the crossfire. The stubborn fucker hopped back over to the bed, trying to jump up to see his owner. However, I knew if he got hurt, she would have sunk into a deeper depression. I went over to the shelf, grabbing what I thought I would never have to use on her. Fuck, and it pained me even to do so. I went to pop open the bottle and a syringe. Drawing in the fluid with the needle, I flicked the syringe a few times to ensure the dose would be administered. When I turned back around, I realized that she had tried crawling out of bed, but she didn't get far before I pinned her back onto the bed. At this point she's bound to hurt herself. The shower incident, and now this. I was terrified she would leave me when. She took a ragged breath, her nose was flaring, and I finally saw her soul cracking under whatever was eating her up alive. The next words that slipped from her mouth completely unmanned me. My heart shattered, and I willed back the burning sensation in the back of my eyes. Please, please let me die, she heaved, begging me with her eyes to let her go of her golden cage, and I had to close my eyes for a moment to concentrate on keeping it together for her sake. How the hell was I supposed to help my wife when I didn't even know the first thing happening inside her head? I will never let you die, I whispered hoping to soothe her when her eyes found mine for a moment as I laid a kiss on her forehead. She's still heaving as I caged her body between my legs. You will continue to live for us because I can't live without you. Her eyes slowly trailed over to the syringe's needle, and tensed. And no, she cried. I, I don't want to sleep, please. Please. I can't, I can't. It's okay, precious, I whispered, cupping her cheek. I made her sure she was looking at me, rather than retrieving into the back of her mind. I'm never going to let anything harm you. They're going to pass through me first before they can ever harm you, Ava. I brought my lips over to hers, sealing my swear to her. Her body instantly relaxed, and I knew that despite her mind and heart refusing to remember, her body did. Then I pricked her neck with the syringe, causing her to whimper before I quickly withdrew the needle. I went to lapse away the blood before kissing the side of her neck, apologizing with my kisses for causing her pain. Hopefully, this was what she needed to sleep. Hopefully, she would feel better after this, and we could figure out what the hell was going on in that head of hers. No, she mumbled, her eyes pleading as she desperately tried to remain awake. I hated to leave her there, but I didn't have a choice. I needed to chase the lead but I sure as hell was going to make sure she was going to be watched. No I don't want, dot the devil. He will never touch you, I snarled pulling her to my chest. Sleep my little bird. 
It didn't take long until the drugs worked their way around her tiny body, going completely quiet as I kissed the love of my life sweetly. Gently tucking her in, I realized that Scrabble had been practically trying to climb up my slacks in an effort to get to her. I sighed, scooping him up and placing him on the bed. Immediately, he started to lick her face, cradling right under her neck, and she never once stirred. I knew she'd be out from the dosage until tomorrow, but it's still pain to leave her alone. Memories assaulted me of the last time I had left her vulnerable, when she got kidnapped. However, Robert had made his move, and now it was up to me. Watch over her for me, I mumbled, and he let out a huff, thumping his good leg as I rubbed the top of his head. I really was going crazy. Getting out, I turned to where Anastasia was looking up at me, lips quivering. Please come home safe. For her. I know, I said. Watch her over for me. I'll get Nikolai to stay behind in case. Empty. I should have fucking known it was nothing more than a setup to mock me for not getting there on time. He had used a knife to pin his phone up against the wall. He had killed an innocent man and taken his house using his blood scribbled in red. Check. Then I realized the dead man held a half-folded piece of paper as Silas retrieved it for me, never once glancing at it. Something in my guts told me not to look that something didn't feel right, and it was only confirmed moments later what it was a photo of. A photo that made me dry heave as bile raised to my throat. I barely even made it outside before I completely emptied my stomach, the image searing into my brain and the trauma Ava had gone through in his hands. Solidifying to me my goal, to make him pay for everything. To be continued.